Welcome back, everybody. This is Brother Min here. Today we have a viewer requested build with someone to ask specifically for a Slayer build using, for example, a sword and board or something similar. Uh, thought maybe I could uh, shed some light on how to make do some extra damage with the character. Uh, it sounded like they wanted a character that could possibly go two levels of Paladin. That's not the build I'm going to show you today, but I will show you how you will change the build to get that Paladin dip. I recommend it, uh, but don't strongly recommend it. There's reasons I like it. Of course, the, the biggie being, of course, the massive saving throw bonuses. But the thing I don't like about it, uh, of course, I should also point out that they also get like heavy armor, which isn't a thing that you'll need for this build because you're not going to be wearing armor. I know that sounds weird. Trust me when I say I know what I'm talking about. Uh, but the other thing that I'm not a fan of is while you may get like a smite ability, you only get it like once a day. You, of course, can pick up things that can actually increase that. You also get like lay on hands like a few times a day, but it's going to be lane healing. Um, and then of course, uh, the, the real downside is uh, you don't get your Slayer abilities up to the best. Uh, the last two levels are actually kind of important. Like in most builds, you know, your, your capstone abilities are usually the best. Yes, there's one or two that's kind of like, who cares? But one or two that's also like really good, and I want to show you what I'm talking about. So we're using a mod just to level the character up, just so we're clear, because they asked for a vanilla version of the game. Of course, I'm still using highlight learnable scrolls. That's not something that you care about, and you're not using scrolls anyway, so I felt no need to shut it off. Um, let's actually get into it, though, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So for your Slayer, the obvious choice was the old human. Uh, you asked uh, if you could go Acemer. Certainly you can. The more, of course, you dip outside of things like human or if you dip into paladin, then you know that means that you're also going to be losing a feet or two. Okay, So that's why I go, always start with human and I'm like, well, you know, if I can deal with human and I don't really care about losing this feet, am I happy switching over to say Asimer or Tiefling for that matter? And again, there's choices here. So that's really nice. I've made multiple builds here. I haven't really uh, finalized some of the other ones, but this is the one that I settled on for you and there's a reason for it. So now, the biggie uh, right off the bat is going to be, are you going to be a strength-based character or a dex-based character? Uh, I normally would say strength-based because Slayer has the ability to unlock dex-based feats without having the requirement for those dex-based feats. So again, like two-weapon fighting, improved two-weapon fighting, and greater two-weapon fighting. I toyed around with that one for a long, long time, dude. Trust me on this one. It's nice. But I was missing an ability that I, I really thought I kind of wanted. Uh, and I'm kind of toying about making that strength based build anyway because I've decided that that feat isn't as impressive as I thought. I'm more on that when we actually talk about it because it actually is in this build. So I went dex based and I went in for a completely different reason. Uh, instead of going for those uh, dex based uh, uh, feats, which again I'm going to have a dex based build, so I actually am um, qualified to take those things for free as I level up and I mean I can take those as normal feats. But then there was some other stuff that was in there that's that's strength based that you said specifically you wanted you know like your power attack, your uh, not cornering and smash, but you said you wanted uh, dazzling display, shattered defenses, the dreadful carnage, and you didn't think that cornering and smash was technically necessary. And certainly it's not. Turns out dazzling display is not either, and I bet you didn't know that. Again, if you take uh, a specific category, and again I'll show you that to you here in a minute, in Slayer, you can actually get yourself the the three feats you care about, which is power attack. Uh, shatter defenses and dreadful carnage as your three feats and do not have to meet the requirements for them which means you don't need like weapon focus we'll get it you won't need dazzling display again i'm happy with that because dazzling display is a useless feat once you can start getting the other stuff no one ever uses the dazzling display anymore it's used to unlock other things so it's a waste feat so it's really kind of nice that you can actually get this in a slayer for free and not have to worry about dazzling display at all uh, same with Corn against Smash, you don't have to pick it because uh, normally you would need it for, uh, I want to say, Dreadful Carnage. But it's still one of those where you don't need it. And again, it's really nice that you don't need it, so you can just bypass that altogether. The fact that we are not a strength-based build means that we normally wouldn't be able to pick up Power Attack, but again, we can get that for free. And that's pretty badass. Now, having said all these things, um, I should be real clear here. Strength-based or Dex-based build, either was viable because, again, uh, as you probably know, in this game, and I still maintain this is a stupid mechanic, uh, but it is apparently pen and paper worthy, you can put on magical gear, a belt, a glove, a hat, or whatever that increases your physical or mental stats. So we're talking your strength, dex, charisma, con, intelligence, wisdom, stuff of that nature. And if that brings you up to what you need to unlock a feat, like say power attack, you can now pick power attack. 
I maintain that's a, a stupid mechanic. I'm sorry, it just bugs me beyond all measure to have... Well, I, I've been training all these things, but only when I'm wearing my cool belt. It just seems dumb to me. So I try for builds that don't have that as a requirement, which is what we have for you today. So, again, this is a purist level 20 Slayer build. Again, I will show you how we leveled up. I'll show you how the starting feats uh, or uh, abilities as well. How I leveled it up, why I picked the feats that I picked at the certain levels. Uh, what I think it offers, and then of course what I think a two-level Paladin dip will uh, change in the build for good or for ill. Let's so let's level actually level look level. at our characters. So the first question really is after strength or dex is going to be what kind of weapon your character is going to wield. Uh, that's on you, uh, but since I went dex space, you better believe that it's going to be something that's probably weapon finessable. Uh, something that could literally give us an uh, extra uh, bang for our buck when it comes to swinging. Um, sadly, and this is the real downside for you here, which is something you probably knew, fencing grace and slashing grace do not work if you have another weapon in your offhand, and that includes your shield. Uh, so that's a big bummer here. Uh, the downside also is for your shields, you need to decide, uh, are you going to be using heavy shields more likely than not, or are you going to be using light shields? Notice that bucklers will not be used because you cannot attack with a buckler. You also cannot uh, use tower shields because, I mean, you don't have training in them and there's no reason to unlock that garbage. So just forget tower shields altogether. You come with all this stuff free, baked into the class already, so it's just up to you. The obvious is heavy, uh, and that's simply because there's uh, two specifically that are considered weapons outright. And the one I have equipped is the one that you probably want. It's called Ravina's Oath. It's an amazing shield. As you can see, I have a really good attack with Ravina Zos, it's a solid plus 31 right now. For a dex-based build where it's not keying off of dexterity, I guarantee you that thing is keep kicking off of strength. If you hover over your plus 31 over here, you'll see that it says strength plus 7. See that there? And again, the reason that it is still keeping up with this guy over here where it has a dex of 13, and it is definitely being finessed, as you can see, you hover over the 31, you'll see it's dex plus 13. Why is it these are the same number? It's because this one has two key features here. One. It is a weapon, and as such, you see the plus five spiked heavy shield. Notice the shield master. It's at plus seven. It's, uh, two is coming from the minus two above it. That's the counter. To it. That's why you grab shield master. It counters that minus two penalty. Only for the shield, not for the sword. The sword is going to have that minus two penalty. That's for two weapon fighting. The other five is coming from the weapon itself. And again, uh, it considers whatever the plus of the, the shield is as another bonus to your swing. So that's why you're seeing plus 7. So plus 2 for the minus 2, plus 5 because it's a plus 5 shield. But again, it is already a weapon, hence the plus 5 spiked heavy shield you're seeing down below. So that means we're actually getting 12 instead of what should have been just a 7. There's another shield that's like this. It's called Bashing Shield, and it actually looks like a tiny, tiny um, light shield. The, just based on the picture by the, the look of the character as they wield it. But it actually is a heavy shield uh, and again behaves in the same manner. The difference is, is that one is like a plus one. So it's like a heavy shield plus one that you can use to do damage. Yeah, it's really it. And it's it's garbage. I mean, early on until you get Ravine as old, sure, you'll use it. But you're almost better off picking something that's just like a, a heavy shield plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five. I mean, really. And the, the, the fact that it does like 1d8 or 1d6 of damage compared to your other uh, heavy shields is nothing. I mean, it's, it's who gives a shit? It's, it's a lame increase to damage. The fact that it's 1d, let's say 8, just to give a number, uh, plus 1 is garbage compared to giving, say, a 1d6 plus 5 from a heavy shield plus 5. Surely you'd rather have that. And again, the plus 5 would swing better. So again, surely you'd rather have that. So the bashing shield, in my opinion, is suck respect. Don't, don't. Uh, use it for too long if you can get yourself any kind of heavy shield plus two and there's some decent ones early on depending on your alignment that you're going to be fine again i'll show that to you in this video as well choices for gear uh, will be of course part of this build uh, but notice that i've decided on the dueling sword and it's because of this bastard right here there's more choices than this and i know where you can get this one is easy enough to get with a team uh, of two where two people can teleport in both have to have invisibility one person needs to literally hide in the goddamn corner well, the other person has a necklace on that you basically activate and you kill his main boss. He drops this shit, which includes the Bloodhound Dueling Sword. You can get this as early as, I'd say, probably level 11 or 12, maybe 13 with the, with the team uh, of two, like I said. Uh, just you and your, your uh, wizard or whatever that can teleport in and teleport out. Make sure you pack enough invisibility potions for the both of you. I'd say like seven or eight total. 
uh, and then um, also make sure that you have the the Mayish charm I think that's the name of the necklace that does AoE damage and that's the one that basically will kill that bastard off once you know what you're doing on that you teleport in you, you separate the two out while you're invisible of course he'll activate a conversation scene you activate the necklace again make sure you don't hurt your teammate because the moment you hurt your teammate the fight's on and he's gonna try to kill you and your teammate so separate yourself out uh, activate the necklace uh, make sure that he's in the R of the necklace, but not you, your teammate. Obviously, the necklace doesn't hurt you. And you just stay in there, replenish your uh, invisibility potions as needed. Not greater invis, not vanish. Invisibility. The key here is invisibility lasts longer. It's one minute per round or, or per caster level. You know, but also, uh, it doesn't shut off unless you attack. You are not attacking. Neither is your teammate. You guys will get your ass handed to you by this prick. But the necklace will hurt him. And that doesn't count as an attack for you for starting at the fight or anything like that. So he'll just stand there twitching like a frog in a science experiment while he's freaking like, oh, man, I'm taking damage. And you have a conversation with this guy, but I don't see him anymore. So I'm just going to sit here and die. And he will. It just takes a while, which is why you take multiple invisibility potions. So keep an eye on your invisibility. When's it going to shut off? Maybe the 10 seconds before it shuts off. Redrink it. Uh, same with your other teammate. Remember, you both need to be invisible because the minute he sees either of you, it's fucked. Uh, and that's it. He'll die. You'll get like Boku XP, especially if you shut off XP share uh, for people that aren't on the team. So you and the person that teleported you in there is going to fucking like skyrocket in levels, like two levels each at least. And then you got like epic loot in the area. And then you just need one more teleport spell, the dimension door spell to get the fuck back out because it's hidden behind a wall. You do all that stuff and you can get this and many other cool pieces of gear for you or your team. And you, I think you would appreciate it. But again, why Dueling Sword? Dueling Sword is uh, one of those rare categories for deck space build that, that serves two really good purposes. One, weapon finesse is really key here. Again, you want to swing, you want to swing hard, right? So you want to make sure you hit. So you got better uh, decks than you do have strength. So why would you want to swing at a plus 7 when you'd be swinging at a plus 13? That's a given. So weapon finessable has to be key. The other thing, and this I cannot stress enough, it is not a light weapon. Now... What other weapons fall in this category? We'll do the next question. Well, rapier, which was a valid option. I've actually built for that as well. Uh, there's plenty of rapiers in the game. Uh, and it's easier to get because, again, this is a, a exotic weapon. So you have to burn a feat just to unlock Dueling Sword. So rapier is a solid choice if that's your cup of tea. It seems weird, uh, but for a slayer, a rapier and a shield might be a, a solid one-two combo that people would look at and say, oh, okay. And, again, plenty of rapiers to pick from. But it's not my choice. I went with Dueling Sword for a couple reasons. One, because this is a really good weapon. And two, again, like we said, with just like the rapier, it is not a light weapon, but it is still a weapon, finessable weapon. Besides rapier and Dueling Sword, another one that stuck out was Estoc, which was the other build, which is the character you see with the big uh, plus sign. She hasn't finished leveling up because I decided when I got to a certain spot, I'm like, yeah, I'm not a fan of this build anymore. It's okay. It does what it needs to, and, and the... the all of these can be in interchangeable. The difference, again, with Estoc and Rapier and Dueling Sword, which is the three that I'm suggesting to you, is Rapier is the only one that does not require that feat burn, the uh, the uh, exotic weapon purchase. Rapiers you have access to from level one and, and ongoing, so you can get like weapon focus in it like day one, which is not bad. That's a pretty good upgrade then for you. If that's your thing, run with that thing. Why do I like Bloodhound so much? Notice this is an ex uh, exceptional weapon, not just because it's an amazing one, but the fact that uh, normally a dueling sword crits on a 19 or 20. That's another selling point for this one. Uh, the other two, Estoc and Rapier, have the highest crit range, 18 to 20. Again, if you keen them, that goes all the way to 15 to 20. Well, why does that matter to you besides, obviously, extra damage? There has a feat that you suggested you wanted, and then when I read up on the feat, it realized that literally the more you crit with your main weapon, uh, you get a free attack of opportunity smack in the face with your offhand weapon, which in this case is your shield which just sounds pretty badass, so you want a good crit fishing build. And this is one of the best crit weapons out there, because again, it's got the 18 to 20. Notice that it's not keen. How do I know that? Because 18, 19, and 20 is three uh, numbers right there, okay? If it's a keen weapon, it's always two. It's always a factor of two. So it's 
not 20, it's 19 and 20. It's not 19 and 20, it's 17, 18, 19, 20. You see that? So the fact that it's 18, 19, 20, only three, that lets you know it's not keen, and therefore if you either make it keen, however you do that with like a spell, for example, or in your case, you get in the improved critical feat, which of course we have done, you will get the full best crit range that you can get in this game, which is 15 to 20. That's awesome. It's a plus five weapon. Again, one of the best weapons in the game, plus five. There's exceptions to the rule. There's some that are like plus four with a plus two bonus if you meet this requirement. There's some that are plus five where, again, if it's a Bane weapon against a specific bad guy, and therefore it's technically a plus seven weapon. But still, a plus five is a solid, solid swinging weapon. Plus five to your swing, plus five to your damage. You will appreciate it. There's more, though. Also, it's a speed weapon, which is baller. That means you get an extra attack. So that was another requirement for me. I liked having that extra attack. It's not necessary, but I think we both agree that two swings at full bab is a solid, solid start to your fight. Then it goes even one step further and meets the final requirement. And this was key. Because you're playing a dex-based build, and because slashing grace, fencing grace does not work with you having a weapon in your offhand, which includes, again, your shield, that means you can't get your, your uh, dex bonus for damage. You have to rely on your strength bonus. You see the plus seven up there for strength? Uh, just to illustrate this right up here. Plus seven for strength. That's not bad, but wouldn't you rather be at plus 13? I know I would. I'm missing six damage, damn it. That's a lot for five goddamn swings. Well, guess what? It's an agile weapon, and that does work now. So agile weapons by default basically are like fencing grace or slashing grace, depending on which weapon we're talking about, for free, baked into the weapon, and the, the game will not take it away. So if you're using a deck space build, you get that plus 13, baby. That's nice. That's real nice, and I thought you'd really appreciate this. So again, this was the only weapon that met all these requirements. The highest crit range, speed weapon, agile, and a plus five weapon to boot. And it's not done yet. Every time you land a, a hit on a bad guy, hence the name Bloodhound, it is a stacking plus two damage for all subsequent attacks with that weapon. You just snackety, snackety, snackety all through that son of a bitch. Just, and you start your normal damage, then it's plus two more, then it's plus four, then it's plus six, then it's plus eight, and you get the idea. Eventually, the bastard's gonna die. That's nice, and I thought you'd get a kick out of that. Now, yes, this is pie in the sky dreaming, as I do with most of my builds. It's not that big of a pie in the sky dreaming. The real hard sell here is literally the shield. Uh, sorry, you don't see it here. Uh, here you go. Ravina's Oath. This bastard is the one that's gonna take you some time to get it, but again, until that time, you got the bashing shield, you got a heavy shield, plus one all the way up to plus whatever you can find, and you'll get some, some of these randos you know, ironclad will, uh, we have, uh, oh, here's another example here, the Ancestral Dwarven Shield is an easy one to get in Chapter 2, and it's only a plus 2 shield, but remember, it is a weapon now, so it is a plus 2 shield, which means 4 extra armor for you, and it is a plus 2 weapon for you at that point, which is something. So again, this is not the worst shield to have. There's other ones, uh, Bulwark, here another plus 2, gives you some ass resistance, and this one gives you some bonus to, uh, uh, acid resistance as well as bonus to perception checks. Uh, we have the heavy shield plus five just to show you that it works for them. Heavy shield elemental protection if you wanted some acid and fire protection. Again, it's still a plus two weapon. Ray blocker. Now note some things here. The difference between heavy shield and light shield before we go further here. Remember, we're doing a power attack build. We could have done a, a piranha strike. However, piranha strike uh, uh, would only, I mean, it would benefit your main weapon because again, it's a light weapon, so, or sorry, a weapon, finessable weapon, so that still works for it. So again, power attack versus piranha strike. You want a power attack, though, because it unlocks your other abilities. Your uh, um, shattered defenses and your uh, uh, dreadful carnage. But piranha strike, it was a possibility instead for a, a different type of build. And again, still worked for this weapon, but will not work for this shield because it's a heavy shield. If it's a light shield, like ray blocker is, piranha strike works on it, Power attack does not. <coughs> so the bonus to damage you're seeing over here, the 29, that's coming from power attack, baby. And again, you see the minus six over here. If I had shut this off and added power or prana strike and turned it on, you you might see the minus six, but you don't get any extra damage. I can't remember if the minus six uh, kicks in or not. Point point still is though that you lose out on the damage. And I'm like, well, screw that noise. And then I feel like, well, what? A, I wonder if it happens for the forewarning, another light shield that I'm a fan of or Ray Blocker, which was the other light shield I was a fan of. And sure enough, Piranha Strike works for them, but Power Attack does not. 
So again, you have to decide what kind of shield you're going to use. I still maintain heavy is probably the way to go because this one is so baller. And bashing shield, even though it does look like this where it looks like it's a tiny shield, it actually is a heavy shield and therefore a power attack will work on it. And again, you get some solid, solid damage out of that extra swing. I thought you'd get a kick out of that too. So again, go heavy shield, in my opinion. There's reasons to want light shields, just to be clear. This one was part of that reason. Look at what you get. Not only is it a plus three weapon, so plus four armor, but also it makes you immune to crits. <laughs> I mean, I just can't tell you how cool that is. So I might use this to say turtle up, so to speak, where I would like uh, have a subpar weapon in here, as you can see, something that's fine with me uh, to switch over from obviously Bloodhound because you can't slot it f uh, four different ways. Uh, without cheating anyway and with forewarning you could literally say you know what? I'm gonna get crit by this bastard a lot time to switch over to this one I'm immune to crits now sucker what are you gonna do and that's pretty badass that, that I love my immunities if you've watched any of my videos you know this this is always a thing but this is uh, still a hard sell for a lot of people ray blocker another fine example for a solid plus three weapon plus four armor uh, but also the fact that it gives you a saving throw bonus against evocation spells. And again, if I wasn't doing a uh, paladin dip, which this build is not, I would keep this in my back pocket for those uh, fights where I know I'm going to walk into an area where they're going to be casting like ray spell, well, not ray spells, like uh, evocation spells. The name ray blocker, by the way, is misleading. Almost every ray spell has no saving throw. So don't bother thinking that, oh, this will protect me from, you know, scorching ray, hellfire ray. None of those have saving throws. I don't know why they call it Ray Blocker. That should be Evocation Blocker. But whatever. I guess it wasn't as zippy as Ray Blocker sounds. But the point is, a plus 40 your saves is a plus 40 your saves. And again, if I wasn't going to get that two-level Paladin dip to really raise up my Fortitude Reflexes and Will saves like crazy, I might want something like this. Again, you can see my saves are not superior to yours. Uh, the, the other build that I'm going to recommend for you, the two Paladin Dips, is going to have these numbers into the goddamn 30s and 40s. This one here will be in the solid 20s at the very least, because Will is your real weak spot here. But this is still a solid character. You can see that you have plenty of armor, despite the fact we're not wearing any. I'm fucking wearing robes, bro. This is plus 8 intelligence, charisma, knowledge arcana, which we didn't even invest in. You should probably unlock it, though. Uh, so I would probably change that simply because it does give you access to a big plus 10 bump. And you do have enough intelligence to make it worth a damn. Uh, but again, we have a variety of things that I thought were interesting. Helmet of the Dust. This is not even the best hat you could be wearing. Remember the hat of mental perfection. That's a plus eight to intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. That's usually my go-to because I'm usually a caster type. And I just want the best stats and I don't care how stupid I look. But I figured you probably wouldn't want to be a slayer that's running around with a stupid-ass wizard hat. It's bad enough you got goddamn wizard robes on. But they do look baller, I must admit. They do look pretty tits. And the Helmet of the Dust looks fucking awesome. You get a kick-ass mohawk plus six to your wisdom. That was the one stat you were missing because these robes only give intelligence and charisma bumps. Plus eight for each, by the way, the highest I can give you. And this is a plus six. That's not bad. And then keep reading. You're immune to stun and daze now, son. That's awesome. Now, of course, the other little fiddly bits of anyone that attacks you, blah, blah, blah. I don't care about that part. The, the real selling point is I'm immune to two things. Stuns. Days. You don't want to be stunned, especially for a character that's going to be meleeing and someone that literally is going to be sneak attack and hopefully at every opportunity. So that's kind of a thing. We got you the Cloak of the Chosen, uh, immunity to blindness and dazzle. Two more immunities I thought would be freaking awesome. And again, you may say, well, as you see the build and once I show you the feats, you have a, a blind fight. Why do you need blindness and dazzle protection? Well, I don't mind being immune to stuff for one. And again, uh, until you get some, uh, uh, like a good ring, which is what I have, uh, that plus three resistance to your will saves, your will saves suck. Uh, we have a plus five right now, so if you actually look down here, you'll actually see your saves are at a plus five because of this kick-ass ring. Until that time, which is probably way down the road, if you can find this thing, at least it's a plus three. And that's the stat that you were really worried about because your reflexes are baller. Your fortitude's pretty decent as well. It's the will saves that are really going to cripple your character. So I figured, what the hell? And then I love this last part. You can't go wrong with at-will spells, especially when they're good, like a prayer spell. It means at any time, any round, if you want to sacrifice your attack, you can say, fuck it, prayer. And what does that do? Remember, that's a, a auto-hit spell. Anyone, including you, that's in your team, that gets hit with it is like a plus one to your saves and a plus one to your uh, attacks, something, something, something like that. So it's, it's a solid buff. It's kind of like bless, but a little bit different. And then... It's a little better than that. It's also auto hit against the bad guys. No saving throw. There might be spell resistance to it, but I can't remember if there is or not. But if it affects them, it's the exact opposite. So a buff for you guys is a penalty to them. 
This is a solid screw you uh, cloak for you and your team. This is amazing for you and your team. Terrible for the bad guys. And again, I thought you'd appreciate that. And of course, we gave you the best ring. The Ring of Circumstances is always a staple for my main character. You can get two of these in the game, and I believe they do stack, but you wouldn't do that. That's just silly talk. One for you and one for your second favorite character is probably the way to go. But for you, the question is, is what do you buff? Well, you can buff four things. So that laundry list that you're seeing there, it's up to you. But I figured strength because you still need to carry stuff and your shield still keys off of strength. So I figured, fuck it. Why not get a little extra damage? Two, I figured, obviously, Bex. You know, free armor, better swings for your uh, main weapon, and you get uh, 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 better reflexes. So, you know, pluses all across the board. And the fact that it's an agile weapon, remember, that's also extra damage for you. So, again, dex buffs are always nice. Then I said, you know, you don't necessarily need con. So what would be the third thing that I'd buff? Well, I would buff uh, charisma for your character because, again, you're trying to either A, intimidate with this build. Remember, your dreadful carnage. Also, you're going to be the ruler of a kingdom. So, of course, persuasion is always a plus for you to have more charisma. And then uh, if you're going to do like you probably want to, you can do the two-level paladin dip. That plus eight charisma bonus that we have here it should be plus seven if it weren't for that ring. So that plus eight is going to give you eight more here, here, and here. And it's actually going to be different than these numbers, by the way, because with that two-level dip really jumps your will for some reason. Don't ask why, but your will suddenly gets really good. Your reflexes kind of go down a little bit, and I think your fortitude is pretty good, too. But the, I think it's a fortitude will save bonus for when you do Paladin twice, and it's a quite a significant change. But reflexes are still going to be solid. Fortitude is going to be solid, and will is going to be respectable if you do that two Paladin dip. And I thought you'd appreciate that. Well, then the last point became what to put the last one in. Because, again, you have four buffs. you got, again, uh, Strength, Dex, and now Charisma. What's the fourth thing we're buffing? And that's on you. I went saving throws, which again is another reason that you see the saving throws are as good as they are. Circumstance bonus from the ring. Plus one, plus one, plus one. Now maybe that's wasteful. Maybe you want extra armor. You could do that. There's a toggle for that. Maybe you want extra damage. It's only plus one. But it's plus one for both of your weapons. And that's something, I suppose. I don't know. Maybe. I didn't give a shit. But whatever. Maybe you want skills. I think if, if you turn it on to the skill tag uh, toggle, then it's like a plus two to all your skills. Whatever. Run that thing. Do what you want. But it's the last one. It's kind of a mulligan pick anyway. And I'm like, that's pretty cool. Then we have, of course, my favorite ring the, uh, after this is, of course, the Great Ring of Ultimate Protection because it covers so many bases. Plus five deflection. That's one of the best in the game. They're like The only thing better is like there's a necklace, I think, that's like a plus six. So this is solid. And they don't stack. So, of course, this is the, the only deflection protection you need at this point. Uh, notice that it also gives you plus four or plus five to all your saving throws. So that's a resistance one. So that's normally a cloak. Remember, we have a cloak that's resistance plus three, but only for will saves. So this three and this five is not stacking. But uh, so what? Five is better than three. Certainly you want the upgrade. And you still want that cloak. So that's a nice upgrade. And then you get spell resistance 24. And while that's not amazing, it's free. And again, the fact that they could fail is kind of funny. And then you get DR2 slash dash, which means you absorb two points of damage from all physical attacks. So bludgeoning, piercing, slashing, always coming your way. You're always absorbing two. It's not amazing, but it's free and it might keep your ass alive. Because while you have some HP, by the end of the build, thanks to all our gear, it's not that impressive. I mean, if, if I'm frontlining it and I don't have armors in the 60s, then usually I'm looking at trying to have at least 300 HP to make sure my character's tough as fuck. 264 is respectable. Don't kid yourself. And you have a solid armor class. We could dilly-dink around a little bit more with that. But the, the trick for me was making sure that we're getting the full 13 dex bonus you see there. That was nice. And again, we're kind of fiddling around with some other bonuses, as you see, like the morale bonus from Hammer Fist. That's for your gloves that you'll see here in a moment. That's not the best possible choice there, but it gave you two extra armor. And I'm like, fuck it. It's a different category. I'd rather have the armor. Yeah, I could have given you, like, the, the, the Scorching Ray Gloves, the Star Soldier's Gauntlets. You have enough dexterity that even without precise shot or point-blank shot, you're going to hit the mark. But it was kind of weird, and I didn't think you wanted to be a Raycaster kind of guy. So I said, fuck, let's go with armor. And again, there's other choices. You could have gloves that would have made you um, uh, have better um, sneak attack. You could have gloves that added acid damage to all your melee attacks, which would have been pretty fucking badass, quite frankly. They would have gone with that instead of the, the sneak attack gloves, quite frankly. Because 1d6 sneak attack may not work. Some guys are immune. Sneak attack doesn't always land. But if you hit them and it's always acid damage, unless they're acid resistant, that's 1d6 of acid damage. So you can see I would have rather have done that one. 
But again, potato, patata, you decide for yourself what you will want for stuff like that. But notice some other stuff here. Besides the weapons and stuff we'll talk about here in a minute, you got braces of arm class plus eight. What the hell are you doing, Brother Mutant? It's because of the robes. Now, yes, there was better uh, armor in the game uh, that would still allow you to have this full 13 dexterity. It's called a Royal Guardian. It's studded leather plus three or some shit. Um, plus five, maybe. Something like that. But it, uh, it was giving me about as much armor as these was. Uh, and it gave you like 20 extra HP, so you would have been like 284. Uh, and we'd have had basically the same armor across the board, and then you would have had this slot for free. But then you would not have had an intelligence and a charisma of uh, extra eight apiece, which means I would have had to put it up here and got that stupid wizard hat. Well, you could have gone like with the crown, but then it would have only been a plus six, a plus six, and a plus six instead of the eight, six, eight that you have right now. So again, judgment call. I mean, yeah, the armor would have been nicer because, again, when you're flat-footed, you would have had more armor. Uh, but it wouldn't have been that much more. It, it literally would have been like a point or two higher here. And your touch armor would have been the same. This armor would have been maybe one or two points higher. So again, for what we did, I'm, I think this is a solid choice. Of course, we still have Gyrona's amulet over here. Uh, this is another plus five armor that's here, here, and here. All three categories, which is always a choice that I will shoot for. This is the one that casts a mirror image on you at the start of every combat for free. For someone that's going to be taking damage, having up to eight images around you at any given time is a solid fuck you to the bad guys. Then, uh, uh, we've already talked about the roads, but also we have the belt of physical perfection plus eight. That's eight here, here, and here. And again, I maintain that's still a solid choice for you. Now, yeah, I could have given you like the, the Star Soldier's Gauntlets where the strength would have been eight. And then I could have given you a different belt where it would have been a dex eight, con eight. So we still would have finished with the same stats, but that belt also gives you like immunity to poison. That's a thing. That's a solid choice for you. Again, I didn't do that. So if you wanted that, that's fine. Know that your armor would go down, though. Because that morale bonus, again, that's here. That is also here and here. So again, another three-category armor bump. Even if it's only plus two, that's plus two extra chances. Uh, uh, armor higher, so chances for them to miss you. So I, I still maintain it's a solid choice. Uh, of course, we went to Manticore Skin Boots, my favorite. Plus four natural armor enhancement. Remember, our necklace is taking up what normally is the natural armor enhancement slot. Remember the armor of the amulet of natural armor plus five is usually the one you put here. But Gyronas is just too good to pass up. Because of that, that off offered the opportunity then for us to put the Matrix skin boots down here. And again, it's not the only choice. There's a half a dozen pair of boots in the game that are fucking awesome. Ones that make you immune to poison. One that makes you resistant to fire or immune to fire. There's ones that make you immune to energy drain. There's just a, ones that give you like physical resistance. So DR 10 slash piercing or some shit or like bone threaded boots or whatever the hell they're called there's a ton of choices but i love these for the, the extra armor and the extra speed i figured you're zippy you go around battle a lot better than anyone else why not capitalize on that shit and as you'll see that gets better than you think so that's going to be really cool and again what you slot in your belt that's just kind of on you as far as upgraded for weapons of course we've talked about our bloodhound and ravina's oath these are the bread and butter for this build this is why you like this build so much but other options you have menace uh, and this is couldn't do without pointing out menace as well as chill uh, child of the wind uh, this is not only a plus three heavy shield but notice again the speed bump kind of appreciating of that but notice the, the menace here this is a big cell um, this is a plus three brilliant energy dueling sword this is another reason i like dueling swords this is one of the only weapons in the game that has brilliant energy built into it that met all the requirements that we were talking about remember it had to be a non-light weapon but still weapon finessable has a high crit range not the best this is the typical crit range for a um, dueling sword, the 19 to 20. Notice over here it's 17 to 20 because of course we have the improved critical feat. So again, you'll see this with all, they'll be uh, 15 to 20 or 17 to 20 will be the staples that you'll see with these weapons. Uh, and of course shields always crit on just a nat 20. But this is the one that you love because Brilliant Energy, by the way, um, cuts through armor as if the armor doesn't exist. So instead of it being armor class or flat footed, it is a touch armor tech at that point. And as you can see, if, if they're armored like you are, this is your worst armor category, so it's easier for you to hit them with this. So while you say, oh, this is only a plus three weapon compared to this plus five speed agile, blah, blah, blah. Sure, it's not doing as much damage, but and the, the, the swing is, is subpar compared to the other one by only like two points. But the fact uh, that it's cutting through all their armor and it's knocking it down to whatever touch would be, this is if the, the target is just so armored up that you have no choice. You have to hit them. This is how you hit them. Okay. And again, this doesn't have to be the shield as a pairing. You can pair it with whatever fucking shield you want, but this was the, the pairing that I went with. And this is a solid, solid upgrade. Now, warning on this, because again, it's brilliant energy, and it doesn't tell you unless you read the tooltip, 
Uh, Burning Liturgy does not work against undead, it does not work against constructs, and it doesn't work against objects, which I don't think exist in this game as far as something to attack. But constructs and undead definitely are. It will not hurt them. Of course, your shield still will, so you'll be switching over to this, forgetting it, and you'll be hitting and do no damage, and then you'll hit and do whatever damage this weapon here, whatever it is, your shield will do. So it'll be something, but it's going to be crap in comparison to switching just back to a, a better choice like this, and just go to town on the undead or the constructs, and you'll kick their ass. Um, I tried to look for adamantine weapons for you. Again, it's not something that's easily defined with all the different categories that we were shooting for. You know, the speed, the agile, the high crit range, the non-light weapon but still weapon finessable. There's not a whole lot in that category. So again, kind of a bummer there. Uh, that's the one you'd usually use against uh, uh, constructs. Uh, we have Swordsman's Passion, another plus two agile. So notice that the, even though this one here is a plus three weapon, uh, see the damage 1d8 plus 22? Watch how it changes. 28 plus 27 for a plus 2 weapon. Why? Because it's an agile weapon. We're getting that full 13 now. That's the selling point here. So that's the real reason that you wanted agile weapons. So the fact that there's two in this category is pretty sweet. Again, still the same crit range, 17 to 20, so kind of lackluster, but it's not horrible. And again, it gave you a solid shield, so a solid bonus to your swing. Notice the 6 shield master. Again, minus 2, plus 4 extras coming from the shield. So again, not amazing, but still a decent choice. And again, the fact that it gives you a bonus to will saves, and it's a morale bonus, by the way, so it stacks. And that will work in Paladin form, too. So if you go the two-level Paladin, which you probably are going to do, then this is still a solid choice for you. And again, I think you will like having the shield. And again, you can probably find this one reasonably mid-game, I'd say. Um, versus like Ravina's old, which is going to be like a goddamn end. Um, Arcane Enforcer, another just another random one that I just picked up. Not the only ones, again, as you can see, we have a variety of choices we'll talk about over here. But this is another one that I just picked, just, just to demonstrate some stuff. Again, it's not agile, so we're not getting as much damage, so we went from uh, 13 to 7, so we're losing out there. Still, it's a solid plus 3 swing, and notice this extra part, it's not uh, illustrated here. It was an extra 1d6 of damage. Now, how that damage lands, I don't know, I didn't test that. Uh, is it just uh, physical damage? Is it like positive energy damage? I have no idea. Divine, who the fuck knows? But again, you, you swing it, check the combat log, you'll see the 1d6. It will be there. It's just not factoring in now. So as, as bad as this looks, add another 1d6 on this, and this suddenly looks a lot better. So this would actually be a 24 to 36. 24 to uh, 36 compared to this one is, is damn near the same range. So really, you're not missing out on, on the decks all that much because that 1d6 extra in there is, is adding a little oomph behind it. But again, this is the worst category for a shield because it's a light shield. Again, notice that we're losing out on a lot of damage here because, again, it's light. It's not gaining uh, the power attack bonus. It says it's at a penalty, so the penalty's there, but you're not getting that plus 12, and I guarantee it. Now, how, how can I guarantee that? Well, I can tell you, if I shut off power attack, this number does not change. And again, that's why I can t tell you these things. And if you ever want to test your own shit, again, I found out something else yesterday. I'm, I'm leery of uh, sharing it with anyone because it's one of those where it's just too badass that I think I want to kind of keep it for myself. Uh, fuck it, I'll tell you. So I don't know if you know this or not, and it's kind of a weird thing that I would have done. I was just dinking around with Power Tag slash Piranha Strike to check out the shields to see if you know they key off different things. That's how I found out, by the way, that the Light Shield works with uh, Piranha Strike but not power attack. And that, that this one, and by the way, if you have both of them on, you get both penalties. You get a minus six and a goddamn minus six. Same with your swing over here. And you're like, well, fuck that. So who would ever want to have both on? Well, first, let me point out that Piranha Strike and power attack, Piranha Strike would make this damage go up, but not power attack. And as you can see, we'd be at a minus six and another minus six. So that would kind of suck. But, wait for it, over here, this one keys off of both Power Attack and Piranha Strike. And if you have both of them on, yes, you had a minus six and another minus six, but you get a plus 12 and a plus 12 to your damage, son. You're at a 24 damage just from those two toggles being on. Now, of course, that's crazy talk, brother. I mean, why would you have a minus six and minus six? That would just be stupid. Who would want to have a minus 12 to the swing just to get 24 extra damage? Well, okay, yeah, sure, that's, that's true. However... If you're playing with mods, and I know we're not because this is an unmod video, but if you're playing with mods, I recommend both Call of the Wild and Nail Jarkana. Call of the Wild has, has uh, two things in it that might be of interest to you. First off, I don't know about Piranha Strike because I never looked into it, but for, for power attack, you know, that, that minus six to your swing, 
That's for every swing, right? Well, there is a feat in Call of the Wild, anyway, that they've added called Furious Blow or Furious Something. And what it does, you read the tooltip, your very first swing, first swing, so again, we have four, so your very first swing, um, you take that penalty from power attack and negate it. So that minus six that you're seeing is gone, but only for the first swing. Okay, so again, minus six and minus six for power attack and prize strike being on, technically speaking, We'd only be at a minus six for that first swing, but we'd still be at the plus t uh, 24 damage. But then, wait, this is where I haven't tested it yet. And again, I, I, I'm leery to fucking put it out there without testing it, but I'm going to share it with you in case you want to test it yourself. With mods, Call of the Wild, and of course, Elder Jekon, one of the spells that Call of the Wild also has added, for those that are spellcaster types, is a spell called Blade Tutor. T-U-T-O-R. Tutor. I think it's a level two spell that Magus, for example, would have access to. Now, if you cast that spell on you uh, and read the tooltip, what it does is it, it takes any penalty that you would have had from, say, activating, like fighting defensively, you get that, a minus to your swing, or power attack, which you have a minus to your swing, or piranha strike, which you have a minus to your swing, and it negates it. So basically, if you see a minus four for power attack, I think was the typical for a Magus build, uh, you could activate that spell and take that minus four away. What I don't know is if it stacks. What do I mean? If I have Power Attack minus four and Piranha Strike minus four, both on at the same damn time, and I cast that spell, will I get just a plus four, or will I get a plus eight back with that spell? Because if I get a plus eight back, holy Jesus Christ, I'm going to go Power Attack and Piranha Strike in every freaking caster build that I have where I have access to Blade Tutor, and I'm going to go probably fighting defensively just to be a complete another a-hole tool where I'm literally armored up to yin-yang, if I can throw in combat expertise in there just to be a jackass, I'll have nothing but blade tutor spells on, under my belt and go to town with, like, massive armor, massive damage, and no penalty to my fucking swing. And that shit's kind of fucking appealing, bro. I'm just fucking saying. If it works, I can't imagine it does. But it, yeah, it's modded, so therefore there could be glitches like no one's business. But again, your choice. I thought that was kind of slick, though. And again, I would have never thought of doing it. I just did it by default. And I'm like, well, let's just see what it works. And when you pick the feet, they automatically turn them on. Both of them are on. And I'm like, why is my swing so bad? And I looked over here and I said, power attack minus six, piranha strike minus six. I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, oh, well, that sucks. And then I saw my damage was huge. And I'm like, wait, what? And I'm like, I didn't realize you could stack them. And I thought that was pretty fucking cool. And now think about, is as cool as that is, wait. <laughs> think about what a sword saint build. I know this is off topic for your slayer, but I'm just... Theory crafting here. Think about what a sword saint build with a dueling sword, a specialty, because you get to pick your weapon of choice and you don't have to burn a feat to do it. It just gives it to you. So let's say you pick dueling sword as your weapon focus uh, and your, your chosen weapon, I think is what they call it. And you get weapon focus for it for free and training, of course, in it as well. So you have this badass sword, this plus five speed weapon, uh, kicking ass with it, and you have a, a strength dex and intelligence split build that would be the three things you'd capitalize on for being a sword saint intelligence being probably really important but dex and, and strength of probably equal importance probably more dex like you have in this build strength is important but dex is definitely key and intelligence is definitely key if you did that and you had both those power attack and prana strike on that spell we talked about and all your buffs besides think about how tough that character would be and how much damage you would dish out because remember unlike you who is wielding it you know, you know, a sword and boarding it up, so to speak, they'd be wielding it one-handed. What does that mean? Remember, if you're not casting spells, and this applies for you too, by the way, your damage, if you really needed to do more damage, look how much more damage you do if you fucking switch to one-handed here. Uh, look how much more damage you get when you go one-handed. But now, yes, you're missing out on the, the multiple swings. That's the reason you went with the shield. And, of course, the armor went crappy too. There's also a feat, by the way, could could get you as a sword saint extra armor called Elduri Dueling Sword Mastery or something like that. So long as you have this in your hand and nothing else in your offhand, uh, it has to be a dueling sword. You get like a plus two to your armor for like a shield bonus. And you get like a plus two to your initiative, just period. Which is just for having the dueling sword in your hand. That's not bad. And again, I could have some serious fun with that. Uh, I just wanted to show you that uh, your damage does go up considerably. And again, it's because you're two weapon wheel or two handed wielding, sorry, at this point. And that capitalizes on both power attack not Prana Strike, I don't think, but Power Attack and your uh, Strength. You get more Strength out of the bang for your buck. So, again, if if Strength was your thing. So, we would actually get a lot more. So, the, the Power Attack minus 6 instead of being plus 12, it's actually plus 18. 
So that's right there. And then we have another plus 5 from the weapon. So 18 and 5 is 23. We're still missing 13. Right there. You're getting your dex, your full dex skill. You're, not, you're getting more than. And again, strength, if it was a strength-based build and this strength was plus 13, it's, you know, have these numbers basically switched, that 13 would actually go up even more than, uh, than this because, again, it's two-handed wielding. For a strength-based build, uh, you get 50% more with your strength. So right now your strength is technically considered 10 for this. But again, the dex was still better. You see that? The 13 is still better. If we would have had these numbers switched, 13 times that uh, by 1.5 and round down, what would that be? So 12 no 6, so it would be 19. So we would have 19, so you have extra 6 damage. If this was a strength-based build, this could be up to 42 per smack, 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 smack. You see how much fun that would be? Then again, I'm just saying, and that's just with power attack. That's not power attack and piranha strike, which could add even more damage. And again, I just I'm like I like my theory crafting. Theory crafting is fun. It's definitely something I'm gonna have to roll up this week, though. I can tell you that right now. Um, I think the game is glitching out because I have so many different fucking picks of all these different gears. Uh, anyway, uh, but this is the the staple build. So let's actually show you the build itself. First, we'll talk about our stats. Uh, Notice all these again. We got a plus eight, 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 plus eight, plus six, plus eight. Then we have, of course, with the ring on, we've uh, increased your strength, your dex plus two, plus two, your uh, charisma, sorry, plus two. Uh, and then we've increased it all of these plus two thanks to Bakken's potion. So make sure that that's why we're seeing that you got an, an eight, a two, and a two there. You see that? So again, for a human build, this is a solid, solid character. Now let's actually talk about what you started at. You started off with a strength of 12, dex of 19. Con 12, Intelligence 14, Wisdom was uh, 8, and then your Charisma was 14, okay? Because we knew we want to have enough Charisma to start at least to make sure that a Persuasion was going to be decent uh, for your Intimidation checks, but also because you're probably going to do that Paladin dip, right? So that's the reasoning that we did those choices to spread that way. And, of course, all five points in Stack started off 19. We invested all four, uh, five points into them as we leveled up, finished with a solid Dex of 24 by the end of the build, and then went further with it, obviously. Now, let's talk about how do we level the character up. Well, first, again, this is a pure Slayer build, so there is that. Uh, we start off with Weapon Finesse, so you can obviously swing with your weapon of choice. Notice we had to pick uh, Exotic Weapon Proficiency in Dueling Swords just to be able to wield it at the start. No Weapon Focus yet. Okay, well, we'll get there. Uh, and again, uh, Slayer Proficiencies, you know, Simple and Martial Weapons. Obviously, Exotic Weapons was a necessity. Uh, if you went Rapier, you would not need to go Rapier uh, in, in weapon proficiency, you'd already have access to it. Then I would recommend weapon focus earlier, get it out of the way. Um, but up to you. Uh, and then again, the fact you have uh, light, medium armor, and shields. This will help you early on. Uh, I'm going a dex based route with these kick ass robes and the brace of armor class plus eight, but until that time, you will wear uh, chain shirts and uh, breastplate and uh, uh, what's the other one? The scale mail, chain mail. Uh, studded leather, leather, shit like that. Whatever makes the most sense for you at the time. Just always keep an eye on these three stats. Uh, flat foot is less likely to be a problem for you. I mean, it sounds, sounds weird, but it really is because with the shield, it helps a lot more than you think. But armor class and touch, you want these to be reasonably good. So long as this one doesn't fall in the toilet, um, you're doing okay. So try to keep it high, high, high. And again, with the decks that you started off with at 19, it's only a plus four. So you start off with like a 14 over here. You know you're doing okay for yourself. Okay? And again, it just steadily gets better as you get more points and decks as well as more gear. Uh, but it's always you're always trying to jump this one up. Uh, but then from there, notice that again, we get our uh, studied target. This is the reason that I, I'm not a fan of the Paladin dips. So let's talk about this first. First, uh, again, this 20-level Slayer, what would we lose? Again, take away the last two because you need to do Paladin 2 to get what you want. So just assume, let's just say you do 18 levels of Slayer, then two levels of Paladin. You would not, but let's just say you did. This would be what you'd lose. You'd still get that feat, so that's still there. You would not get this, you would not get whatever this is, you wouldn't get this upgrade, and you wouldn't get this thing. So let's talk about these things and then talk about what Paladin would give you. So again, that feat's still here. This uh, study target, it's a bonus. You see how it's one, two, all the way up to five? That's just a plus five. You're at plus four. So it's not gonna be the end of the world that you're only getting a plus four for that, whatever that is. And it's like a bonus to your attack and your damage when you study a target. You still get to study the target as a swift action. That's going to be key and important in your build. You literally, once you get to level 7, or when you unlock this, which will probably be either at 7 or at 9. You know, more on that later. But basically, once you have the swift version, this should always be in your tray. This should be something you always do. 
you should look at your target, say swift study that target, so I'm capitalizing on my damage on that son of a bitch and my swing. That's amazing for you. And again, it goes from plus one to plus two all the way up to plus five if you're a purist, plus four for you with the palette and depth. Again, plus four versus plus five is not that big of a difference. So I'm still fine with that. So that's not the worst problem you have. You lose this feat. Again, I picked a junk feat, in my opinion, at the end, on purpose to specifically highlight that this was, who cares? Yes, I like fast stealth, but it's one of those where I could have moved fast stealth up and got rid of, say, dispelling attack. Or, well, maybe not blind and critical, but something else. And again, up to you on some of these picks. I'll walk you through the ones that you must have and the ones that are kind of on you to decide. But there's some really good choices in here. Some stuff was just too good to pass up, in my opinion. But again, on you. Uh, but this was an easy, you know, who gives a shit, fast stealth. You just move normal. You are, uh, you get the equivalent, by the way, of fast stealth for free. For a lot of people know this. this. This kicks in for free if you have, like, an invisibility spell on you. Vanish, invisibility, or greater invis if someone casts it on you. Or you just chug a potion and, and go that way and be invisible. It moves you into stealth mode immediately, and it actually is the equivalent of fast stealth. Because, you you know, again, you have the benefit of the potion, so you naturally move a little faster. Which is fucking cool. So instead of that little creepy crawly that everybody else does, you chuck a potion and you just, do, 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 do. I'm over here now, stab, 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 and this guy dies. So fast stealth is pretty cool, but it's only if you're, you're really going to heavily lean into the stealth. And we have skills. I mean, I'll show you those here at the end. But we have plenty of skill in stealth. You can pull off a solid stealth build, especially with gear. Like there's a, a, a cloak, uh, for example, that give you like another plus 10 to your stealth just for wearing the goddamn thing. And it makes you immune to blind effects again. Very similar to the cloak and the other stuff that we have. So, again, there's options is my point. But you would lose this feat. Okay? And I, I call these feats even though they're not technically feats. In many cases they are. So I'm just lumping them together and saying it's a feat. So you lose that one for going two levels of paladin. You also lose, and this is the real downside, improved quarry. Why is this a big deal? It's not the, the plus two going to plus four that bothers me so much. I mean, I love it, and I, I want it. That's why I did the Peter's build. It's this part right here, free action. You can now cast it as a free action. What was it before? Standard action, which means I'm wasting my turn. I ain't doing shit. I have to literally activate this on the target, and now I'm done. Well, not done, because, of course, you can use your swift thing here, too. So you do study target, which does stack, of course, with your quarry. So you can do one, two, pow, pow. My turn's over. I don't do any damage in combat round number one, or maybe I'm lucky in a surprise round number one. But so what? Point is, for that round, I did do jack and shit for helping out the team. Yay me. But when you get to here, suddenly, oh, baby, a freaking free action. Not even swift action. That's what this one was. Free action. That means I can activate that all day long. Like click that. Oh, I didn't want that tire. Oh, switch it over here. Free action. Okay, you want, no, I want back to that guy. I really did want him. Okay, select him. Free action. Boom. Click, 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 click all day long. Doesn't bother you. Because the last person you click on will be the person that you get this bonus from. And that's a plus four now. This is something you miss out on for going paladin. Now, yeah, you may say, oh, I'll get smite evil. Sure. Once day. Ring a ding ding. It's not even that much of a buff. And then get Lay on Hands. Again, a few uses. It heals like 1d6. It's not even, you're not high enough to even get a Mercy so that like you can remove fatigue or something useful. You're only getting, really for that two Paladin dip, you're only getting the Ability Wear Heavy Armor, which on a Backspace build is a stupid idea. And then you also get, um, you know, the, yeah, the saves. The Divine Grace, I think it's called. So your charisma modifier, whatever it is, gets added to all these three things. And don't don't kid yourself, that's a big sell. And of course your saving throws do change a little bit. Your BAB doesn't change, it's a 20 all the way. So Paladin, uh, two level dip, you still get the same amount of BAB. So that's nice, but, but it really wasn't adding much except for the saves really. And that was the real selling point. You also miss out again on Master Slayer, your, your capstone ability. I don't say that I use this, but this would be cool. And I like the idea of an attack that's like a full bonus attack and just Fortitude to die, motherfucker. Boom. You know, maybe it doesn't work. Maybe it does, but that could be cool. So again, that is the difference. So now let's talk about leveling up. All right. So again, we have our weapon finesse. Uh, uh, exotic weapon unlock. Dueling sword is this choice. Again, it could have been S stock, which is what she did. Uh, could be something else. But those two weapons were probably the most uh, obvious exotic weapons for the high crit range and uh, finessable, but still not considered light weapons. And there's a okay smattering of S-Docs in the game, which is, again, the reason why I tried her out. Um, then from here at level 2, these falls under a specific category. So 
These are your uh, Slayer talents, or what these ones are. All, these feats are all, all categorized as. But this is a s specific pull-up tab. It's I forget what it's called. It's combat something, not combat trick. That's different. It's like combat feat or combat style, something like that. And uh, originally, I was doing the 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 sword and board. The like you have a, a two weapon fighting choice. You have one that's for like a shield and sword uh, fighting style. Which was the obvious choice again too, because again, you know, you're going to be shield bashing, you're going to be um, uh, shield mastery. All that cool shit was unlockable from there. You only get three of these though, and you get one at level. And it's t if you read the tooltip before you pick it, it tells you at level two you get it, in the, or, or can get it, and get it again at level six, and get it at level ten. And as you'll see, those were the three feats that we picked to upgrade your character. But the one that you went with here is menacing, the menacing style. Okay. Menacing style allows you to take power attack even though you don't have a strength of four, or 13 or 14, where the fuck it is. So you can get power attack for free. Bam. Then over here, I'm just jumping around because this is the three important things you want to make sure not to forget these. At level 6, you're going to grab the next one, and that's Shatter Defenses. Yes, Cornigan Smash shows up. Yes, Dazzling Display shows up and all kinds of other weird shit. doesn't matter. Shatter Defenses was the one you wanted. And again, you do not have to meet the requirements. So Shattered Defenses, boom, we skip right past Corn Against Smash and Dazzling Display, which are, again, for you, a useless couple of feats. Then at 10, you go, again, right for Dreadful Carnage. And again, yes, the Dazzling Display and Corn Against Smash and all kinds of this shit's going to show up. Who cares? This is the one you wanted. So for the three feats, we got Power Attack at 2. At level 6, you got your Shattered Defenses. And at level 10, you get your Dreadful Carnage. Now, I say at 2, 6, and 10. But remember, Pally Dip. Where are you going to put those two levels of Paladin? Very first two levels is the obvious choice. And then to go for Slayer for the next 18. Um, you could unlock some stuff with Slayer first. Again, maybe get like to the sneak first sneak attack dies or so. I, I'd honestly even go as far as to maybe unlock Shattered Defenses. Because just because you can't intimidate them yet without your, your dreadful carnage, your team can. Right? You know, someone maybe else on your team has Dazzling Display or Cornigan Smash or, you know, Fierce Spells or whatever. So I'd at least get to Shattered Defenses in my opinion. So level 6, and then Paladin dip 1, 2, and then finish from 9 to 20 for the rest. Again, but on you where you put those two. Again, you can start 1, 2 for Paladin. You can do it at, at 3 and 4. I would probably, like I said, though, at least unlock Sneak Attack. Just to have it. I mean, it's kind of weird not to have that one unlocked early. Because, uh, again, delaying that by two more rounds or two more levels, that's a big screw you for this character. And, again... You don't get a lot of sneak attack on this build. You'll notice, again, I did not get a conflict sneak attacker. If you do want it, you need to grab it. You need to grab it early. Uh, but again, that, that was my uh, menacing choice. Okay, Once I realized that I could get that without having the strength that I needed, and again, again, grain of salt. Remember, you can have a belt on. Uh, strength plus 2. Remember, your strength was 12 at the beginning. A, a, a belt of strength plus 2, that, that troll you can find in Chapter 1. Kill that motherfucker near him or on him. He's got a, a strength belt plus two at least. Put that on your character. You'd be at strength of 14. You could take power attack up here at that point. But do you need to? That's why I like this build. Because, again, I don't have to. This will, uh, still allows me to pick the feats that I wanted where I wanted them. So, again, here's power attack. Now, at level three, weapon focus, dueling sword. I don't even know that you need that. Uh, but I think it may unlock something else down the road. I can never remember these things. And I almost always, if I know that this is going to be my weapon of choice, then I almost always want to get weapon focus. A plus one to your swing is just a plus one to your swing, bro. I mean, people are going to be like, oh, if it's not necessary, grab something that you really want. Sure, it's always a choice. But that's why I say that a lot of these things are going to be, if you don't need it, don't bother. But if you need it, and I think you do, but I could be relying on the fact that I think you need this for like dazzling display. So maybe, and since we don't have dazzling display, again, you may not need it. So I, I, it might be like a dreadful carnage thing. No, it doesn't say anything about weapon of choice. So you might not need weapon focus. I might be defaulting back to my old memory of needing it for dazzling display. But again, that's a free feat then for you. Or move something else up, obviously. Notice that we have uh, here, uh, this is where you get combat trick. This is the one good thing about vanilla version of the game versus my mods. Uh, if if you play with my mods, the the uh, Call of the Wild, Eldritch Arcana, I forget who does it, probably Call of the Wild. They change a lot of stuff. For example, they make it where you can't grab combat trick more than once. We grab it multiple times, so you're going to see it's weird. If you're not playing the vanilla version, this build is not viable. But I can have even more fun on a non-vanilla version, so I don't care. But for a vanilla version, we went from Weapon Folks at level 3. Level 4, we grab the combat trick for two-weapon fighting. 
Uh, this allows you to now uh, wield two weapons, but not a shield as a weapon. But notice, shield bash is right around the pike. So again, now you can. And again, I hemmed and hawed, or which was more important to grab first. This is really more important to grab first, because if you try to shield bash without having two weapon fighting, you're at a massive goddamn penalty. In fact, I think you needed two weapon fighting to unlock shield bash, now that I think about it. So this is a perfect one-two combo. So again, level five shield bash. Then at level six, that was our shattered defenses. Remember, menacing. That's our, our level six. Then we went for improved two weapon fighting. So by level seven, so to, to put this in the context of some stuff first, a uh, one through five with a team from start to finish, always on, everyone's sharing the same XP, like a typical vanilla version of the game. By the end of chapter one, when you beat the Stag Lord, you're here. Right around five, maybe you're lucky you did a bunch of hunting for extra shit and you got to level six. But by and large, I say you beat level five. Maybe when you talk to Eldori, uh, the Lady Eldori, and she gives you a, a XP jump and you get to six by the start of chapter two. But five or six is where you're going to be at. So again, you're getting two attacks. And again, uh, uh, the breaking points for your um, base attack bonus, remember, uh, you need to get to six uh, level six before you get two attacks with your main hand. So if you're at level six in chapter two, you get two attacks with your main hand, you know, a well, good one and a bad one, obviously. And then you, of course, have already unlocked your shield bash uh, and two weapon fighting. So at level six, you have technically three attacks, a sword swing, a sword swing, and a shield smack. Okay. And then uh, you're rapidly at level seven, going to jump up to improve two weapon fighting. So now you get a sword swing, a sword swing, and a shield smack, and a shield smack. So now we're at four attacks by level seven. And this is still easily early chapter two. Then I'd say probably at the end of chapter two, you're probably around level eight. Uh, and you've unlocked another combat trick called combat reflexes. Why was this one important? Hey, this one is not necessarily important. It's not necessarily important here. For a high deck space build, though, this one seemed like an obvious choice. The more decks you have, the more tax opportunity you could employ. And you'll see it's going to be important in this build later. So you want it at some point, not necessarily now. So again, shuffle stuff around as you see fit. But a lot of stuff are locked into place. Again, like the 2, the 6, and the 10, which I've told you about before. But no, that's level 8, combat reflexes. Then, of course, at level 9, we got improved critical dueling sword. And again, this one can be picked at any time. You don't necessarily have to pick this one, but why wouldn't you want to have the highest crit potential of the weapon you're going to have in your main hand? Again, if you know you're going to get keen weapons, fine. Don't grab this. But I couldn't guarantee that you're always going to have the keen dueling sword. And again, there's a, a for example, there's a, a decent smattering, at least, of like keen rapiers. So again, you might not need this for rapiers, but I'd still pick it up because when you get that kick-ass rapier and you're like, oh, I would totally equip this, but it doesn't have that double crit range. Oh, boo. Yeah, but now you have it. So pick it up. Pick it up as soon as you can-ish. Again, which of these you grab? You could have slopped those around, for example. Uh, made this 9 and this 8. Uh, to the, uh, This 8 to this 9, this 9 to this 8. Could have been uh, a viable option. Uh, notice here, again, that was our Dreadful Carnage. Moving on. And, of course, this unlocks. This is a really hard pick for you, by the way. You have to pick here at 10. Uh, but notice here you have also Advanced Talents. There's all kinds of cool shit, as you're going to see, show up, and it's going to be really tempting. Oh, whoa, whoa, I want... No, no. Dreadful Carnage at 10. You can't pick it up later, I don't think. So at 2, 6, and 10, those are your, your three choices, uh, chances to pick up your your uh, fighting style, whatever the fuck it's called. So that's where you have to grab them. Okay, That's why I always told you that 2, 6, and 8. Or sorry, 2, 6, and 10. Uh, then at level 11, we got greater to weapon fighting. The very next earliest case scenario for us for that. And again, some other stuff could have been more appealing. So again, if, if, if that third shield smack isn't important to you here, uh, then you'll know, push it back a little bit. That's fine. But these other ones are going to be kind of important too, as you'll see. But at level 12, now this is where we fi finally start using our advanced talents for some fun. Again, this is your choice. Uh, this is my choice. Crippling Strike is a solid, if you're doing sneak attack damage, and you're going to be doing a lot of it. As you can see, all these weapons can sneak attack, and you got fucking five and three. You got eight goddamn attacks around, bro, uh, by the end of this build. And all eight of them could sneak attack, potentially. So if that's true, each time you sneak attack an opponent, uh, you lower their strength by uh, two points. You can actually kill dudes by lowering their strength to zero or less. Not from just damage, just from strength damage. So this is something that I do with Knock Knock, because he two weapon wheels, as you know, all the fucking time, and he's a little monster with those kukris. And again... That's a really nice screw you to the bad guys. So this is something that Knock Knock, he'll get it, but he'll probably pick that shit up probably like right goddamn there. So now you're getting it a little late, but that's not too late. This is probably square into chapter three. 
Uh, and this would be, like I said, when you fight that wizard for that fuck, or that, that lich son of a bitch for this fucking sword. This would be right about where you're going to be getting it. 11, 11, 12, or 13 in chapter 3 somewhere. Uh, as soon as you get into Varnhold, that's the, the key here. You, once you get into Varnhold and can, can look for the people, there's a necklace in there called Maya's Charm. You find that fucking thing in a little barrel or something. So check everywhere. Find it. Uh, and then the, that's the one you're going to want to keep on your character for the time being until you get the guy Roman Samuel. That's the one you can activate. There's a big aura that kicks off of it that damages people. And the, the necklace also makes you immune to like fatigue and exhaustion, which is fucking baller. So you're never tired. Um, but that's the thing. And then again, that's like I said, right around chapter three. Uh, and then you uh, go fight that son of a bitch. And this is right where that's happened. Then you'll get like two level jumps with you and the teammate because you have to have someone teleport you in and teleport you back out, right? You teleport in with two, uh, with one other person, and let's say you, uh, again, shut XP share off where only you and that other person get the XP for that main fight. You'll jump from, let's say, your level 12, you'll jump to at least 14, maybe if you're lucky, 15, but at least to 14. Both of you. So you go boom, boom, two levels for beating that son of a bitch because he's an end-level boss. He's like level 19, 20 boss. We're cheesing it like crazy here. But think about how you can go from getting your crippling strike, suddenly you have... Shield Master at 13, and then Bash and Finish at 14, which is another combat trick. That's a nice one-two combo. Now, why uh, were these important? Again, the order, uh, I don't think mattered. Uh, I don't think you need Bash and Finish before Shield Master. Maybe I'm mistaken on that. But um, Bash and Ma or Shield Master and, and uh, Bash and Finish had a bad requirement of like 11, which is why I said that this could be shuffled around. You, for example, you could probably move Shield Master to here earlier. Again, kind of on you. I'd rather have the extra attack. This takes away the penalty to your swing with your shield. So again, you see that um, shield master plus seven there. Normally it's two because it's the other minus two, the counter to it. That's what this gives you. But it also gives you your weapon, um, uh, your shield modifier as a, a weapon bonus. That's why you're seeing the plus seven, not the plus two, because it's a plus five shield. So if you have a good shield, maybe you'll say, fuck it. I'd rather have it be a, a solid swing now. So switch this one to here and then, uh, or switch this one to here and then leave that one there or switch uh, greater to weapon fighting down to here and move shield master to 11 and bashing finish to 13 okay so these ones are kind of free floating it's whenever it makes sense to you but I, like i said i think you need uh shield master before bashing finish if i'm not mistaken now shield master is awesome as you can see and again, especially for something like this shield that is a weapon by itself, it's doubly awesome. That's why you get seeing the, the plus seven and the plus five there. But this is the reason that you want to remember we talked about uh, uh, why do you need criticals and why do you need uh, combat reflexes? It's because of shit like this. Whenever you score a critical hit with your improved critical dueling sword, uh, with your melee weapon, you can make a shield bash attack uh, at the same target using the same bonus as a free action. Uh, uh, it says opportunistic bash. I don't think that that counts towards your attacks of opportunity. I could be mistaken on that though. But I figured, fuck it. I like attacks of opportunity. And again, with a high dex build like this, why would you limit yourself to just one when you can have 13? Isn't you're never going to get 13. But if you had a chance for a second attack or a third attack of a top opportunity just by pure dumb luck, how bad would you be kicking yourself if you didn't get it because you didn't grab combat reflexes? You see what I'm saying? So again. Maybe not as important as improved critical, but definitely something you want on the build. And again, I love the fact that I can literally set up my own bashing finish where I can uh, crit heavy son of a bitch like I am over here, still get my attacks, still get my shield smacks, and then I'm getting extra attacks on top of that because I crit, I crit again, and I shield, shield bash, shield bash, shield bash, just, just to be a dick. Just is kind of funny. Uh, and I don't know how many times you can do that in a round if that's more than one, because that'd be awesome, because we got five fucking swings here. If we get it five goddamn times, you could have five and five, and it would be ten, three would be thirteen. You could technically have thirteen attacks. I don't know if that's a thing, but it would be cool if you could. And again, if the thing that was limiting you was the fact that you didn't have combat reflexes, you'd be kicking yourself in the ass over, why I should have grabbed that. Yeah, that's why you grabbed it. So again, definitely want it where you grab it is on you. From uh, uh, there at level 15, we got Double Slice. Now, this one is, uh, uh, again, another mulligan pick. You can decide to throw this in the trash. But let me explain what it does. Uh, for your offhand weapon, remember this. If, if you're going heavy shield, remember this is a big if. If you're going heavy shield, remember it keys off of your strength. Because it's not a light weapon, it's a heavy weapon, te technically speaking. And that's not even true. Why do I say this technically not true? Remember this um, minus two? 
if this was truly a heavy weapon, like it, sh it should be, it's, it's supposed to be treated like it was a long sword, for example. If this was a long sword, you'd be at a minus four, Sunshine. So why is it at minus two? So the game is broken. Don't tell anybody. It actually should be a minus four for you. But again, it would have been overcome by the Shield Master, so you would have been at a plus nine instead of a plus seven. So it's not that big a deal. But early on, that is a big deal, because that minus two is always there. And I'd rather it be minus two than minus four. I think we both agree on that. So you can see why this is kind of weird. The light shields, though, they say specifically when you get shields. I mean, it shows up uh, when you talk about shield dash here. Uh, a light shield is 1d3 damage. is considered a light weapon. That still jives. A heavy shield is 1d4 damage. Obviously, this is a, a better category because it is a weapon proper. Um, it's considered a one-handed weapon, like a longsword. It is not because of that minus 2. If it was a, a normal one-handed weapon, it would be a minus 4. But again... Potato, potato, the fact that we have shield mastery negates it anyway, so I don't particularly care, but it is an issue. But double slice, back to what we're talking about. Because it's considered a heavy weapon, and because power attack works on it, and because you're getting extra damage thanks to power attack, you know that it's a strength-based attack. So this plus seven here. Notice it's an off-handed weapon. Normally, that's what this normal means, you add only half of this plus seven, rounded down. So instead of seven damage here, I would only, without double slice, I'd only be getting, instead of 29, it would go down 4 points. Why 4, not 3? Because it rounds down. So it's technically 3.5, but rounded down is a 3. So instead of a 7, it's a 3. So you lose 4 points. Without double slice, this 29 would drop down to a 25. Now, is that the end of the world? No. But it's 4 extra damage 3 possible times in a round. That's like all, up to 12 damage if I hit all 3 times with that shield. It's a pretty good swing, man. So 31, 26, and 21, that's that's as good as you're keeping a pace with this little fucker. And for being a strength-based attack versus a dex-based attack, this is pretty goddamn good. And I'd rather have the 29 versus the 25. So that's why I grab double slice. But again, only works on the heavy shield. If it's if you're going light shields for like for that, remember the one that gives you the immune to crits, for example, you will not get this plus four. You it'll it'll drop down something crappy. So you'll notice that those uh, attacks are really, really bad with the light shields. But if you're going heavy shield, any heavy shield, I still maintain double slice is the choice. Okay, I tried double slice uh, just so we're clear on this because, again, I did a lot of theory crafting. I did a lot of tests. That's why you got so many characters here. I did double slice with um, a piranha strike. I did it with power attack with both. Uh, I tried it on with it off, all that shit. I tried it with uh, fencing grace, slashing grace. I tried to look for agile shields, which they say there are in the game, which is bullshit. I couldn't find one uh, on my mods anyway. That, were, that I could gift them to myself, but they weren't uh, uh, going to the shield slot. They were broken. They went into the weapon slot. So they're clearly borked. Um, so there's probably no agile shields in the game, and there's probably no uh, spiked shields in the game either, even though it says there are. So again, I picked them up, gifted them to myself, and they, they went here. So I'm like, well, that's clearly wrong. I couldn't even drag them to here like by, by default. Nope. So... This is the, basically what it is, is. Basically, the best you're going to get is double slice with a heavy shield. Okay, And again, it's not amazing. On a, on a strength-based build, flip those numbers. Okay, So again, if we had a strength where it's plus 13 and dex where it's plus 7, which we could have done in a sli slightly different build, still viable option. Um, what could you have done different? What, what would the double slice would have been? Instead of, uh, uh, if double slice wasn't here for that strength build, the shield, the heavy shield, instead of getting the 13 damage, you would be getting only half of that, so six damage. So you'd be losing out on seven points now instead of the four that this one's losing out on. So you, you can see double slice really does add a lot of bang for your buck, so to speak, uh, if you have a really decent strength stat. And plus seven is not amazing, but again, I, I appreciated the four. So everybody's different on that one. You may decide that that's not worth it. Pick other shit. There's plenty of other choices. And again, it allows you to shift stuff around so you can get some of these really, really cool slayer talents down here because there's some good stuff i mean fast stealth was still viable but there's other stuff in here that was really really trippy so feel free to look through those things but i i still maintain that double slice was a solid choice at the 15. then notice back down here at 16 we grabbed blinding strike that's an amazing uh, one again it opens up with advanced talent so we could have grabbed it at 10. remember you will not grab anything at 10 but dreadful carnage uh but after that though you could have grabbed this earlier say than instead of crippling strike Blinding Strike is a nice uh, blinding critical, uh, basically giving you here for free. And what does that mean? Uh, we don't even need to meet the prerequisites, which is awesome. But basically, blinding critical is nothing more than a toggle, or, or not even a toggle. As a matter of fact, I think it's just always on. Anytime you crit, period, with any weapon that you have, 
uh, there's a, a, a blinding effect to the bad guy, assuming, of course, they have eyes. And that, remember, blinding is just like it sounds. It's basically the same equivalent of you being invisible. Well, what does that do? That means it sets up sneak attack for you, son. So this is an amazing screw you to the bad guys where if you can blind them with this, even just for one round, then it's choppity choppity time and you're just all kinds of fucking damage just whooping up. So again, while these numbers are looking impressive and certainly they are and the damage is there and the armor's there, I keep forgetting to point out the fact that you got sneak attack guys. And again, we have ways to make that higher. There's gloves that gives it another 1d6. We have a necklace that we could have swapped out instead of a guy rolling his amulet to give you another like 1d6, 2d6, or 3d6, depending on which necklace you use. So again, we could have had a lot more sneak attack die than just that. And again, if one of these feats didn't wow you, like I said, uh, maybe you don't want a uh, double slice. I mean, four damage is four damage, but again, you could lose it and maybe grab yourself a comp with sneak attacker. That's another 1d6 uh, for all your attacks, not just these guys here, for all of them. So that's a, that's a thing. Uh, if, if I were to do that, if I, if I know I didn't need weapon focus dueling sword, for example, and I don't think you do, you could slop that out and grab a comp with sneak attacker and grab that shit early. Because uh, it would be the exact right time to open up. You have to have a sneak attack die to take that feat. That'd be the perfect time to grab it. Uh, so you could have finished with 76 instead of 6. But again, up to you on stuff like that. But I did like blinding criti uh, blinding strike. Excuse me, keep calling it blinding criticals. That's what it technically is. But it's called blinding strike. Solid, solid upgrade. Uh, and then, of course, we have blind fight. That kind of reminds me that I need blind fight. And again, this could be something, in my opinion, that you could have moved up a little earlier, say, instead of combat reflexes. Uh, you could have swapped those around or, or moved it around instead of you know having maybe improved critical here, blind fight there, and then uh, 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 combat reflex is way the hell back here. Again, on you for when you want to shove that stuff around. But blind fight is a solid upgrade. And, and you may say, with all the gear you have, remember, you're immune to blind, uh, uh, blindness and, and daze attacks and dazzling effects and blah, blah, blah. Why don't we even need this? This is why you need this. Immunity to gaze attacks. Period. Just by default, you're immune. The other shit is nice. Don't kid yourself. But it's this here. Because at the end of the game, there are some bad guys, without spoiling it for you, that have never played it. There are some bad guys that gaze attacks are like their main bread and butter. And you get boned. Even as a team, you get fucked royally without blind fight on the main characters up front. Because they will literally screw your shit up. So this is power. And that's why this one is always in my builds if I can fit it in somewhere. At least by 17 to the end. Uh, earlier is, of course, always appreciated, but again, up to you when to grab it. But that's Blind Fight. Uh, here we have Dispelling Attack. Uh, this is another amazing upgrade. This is, again, another Slayer talent. Again, something that came from Advanced Talents, so it wasn't there at the beginning, but it's there at the end. Uh, dispelling Attack is the one where every time you sneak attack a target, or just attack. Yeah, you deal sneak attack. Every time you sneak attack a target... You basically cast a target to dispel magic on the target. And again, with you getting multiple attacks with your two weapon wielding, this is something that I even give knock knock. So that he's just like, you know, take, taking on wizards and clerics that are all buffed up to the fucking eyes. And he's just like, nope, you don't get that spell. Nope, you don't get that spell. Sneak attack. No, that spell's gone out too. And you just fuck dudes up. Now, obviously, uh, the ones that key off a of sneak attack like this and your uh, crippling strike here, uh, just to be clear, guys that are immune to sneak attack, well, guess what? You're not lowering their strength and you're not lowering uh, or, or dispelling their uh, buffs because they're immune to sneak attack. Again, only a sneak attack is applicable. Does that shit kick in? But blinding critical doesn't have that problem. It just requires you to crit, and we got the best crit weapon in the game, 15 to 20. That's all we care about is that high, high, high crit potential. So, again, if you feel like that's more your cup of tea, shuffle those things around a bit. And then uh, we finished up here. This will be the last one you get if you're paladin. Remember, you don't get this one. So intimidating prowess. It's late. Uh, I will grant you. It's definitely late. You may move that up again. Uh, it depends on how you want to shuffle that stuff. I still maintain you want it. And again, uh, part of the reason it's late is because you didn't really have a very good strength stat until late in the game. You really need to find that belt of strength plus six plus eight, whatever you can find. Bakken's potion in the, the ring. But when you start getting those things, it kind of reminds you, oh, well, you got all this strength and I'm not really getting a whole lot of intimidation bonus. Oh, yeah, missing Intimidating Prowess. And that's the thing that just needs to be shuffled around to wherever makes sense to you. But the hard ones, the, the, the runes that have to be where they're at, is your your level 2 Slayer pick here. Remember, I say layer two, level 2 Slayer pick because, remember, you could have started with Paladin 2 levels. So at this point, this would be at level 4, then this would be at level 8, and this would be at level 12 if you went that route. Uh, just remember that the very first pick 
for your Slayer talent has to be Power Attack. Your your third pick from your Slayer talents, which is here at level six, but again, it could be a different level for you if you go Paladin, is Shattered Defenses for Menacing. Remember, these are all under the Menacing category. This one here at level 10, uh, which is your one, two, three, four, fifth Slayer pick for talents, uh, is your last menace, and that's the Dreadful Carnage. Those are a must where we grab those, okay? Uh, because that's the only place you can pick them up. You can't say, oh, I'll just grab that the next time and I'll grab two weapon fighting now. Nope, you now fucked yourself. So you have to grab those three where I say, okay? Uh, anywhere else, stuff is like free floating, wherever it makes sense. And of course, uh, you know, restrictions based on dab and, you know, do I have this other feed already picked and blah, blah, blah. But shuffle stuff around as you need. Notice, though, that these ones down here uh, are kind of locked in as well. Uh, in that crippling strike, blinding strike, dispelling attack, and of course, in this case, fast stealth, have to be picked down here. Okay, they have to be down here somewhere. Again, not at two, not at six, and not at ten, but anywhere else. And again, most of these, with the exception of fast stealth, have to be picked at level ten on up. Ten was already taken, so there really there's only one, two, three, four, maybe five choices if you go a purist left for you to fit this one this one and this one so three out of four or three out of five you got a very tight window for those three things of dispelling attack the blinding strike and crippling strike where they can go so again this is kind of again bash and finish didn't have to go here i could have moved fast stealth here and do bash and finish there or bash and finish up here and moved intimidating prowess to there again whatever but i knew i wanted to have something at the end where if you said i still want that paladin dip you can say oh i'm not getting fast stealth then okay and that's why I left the crappy-ish one in the back end here. Uh, but that's the build, son. Uh, let's talk about uh, skills. Uh, notice that we have uh, maxed out athletics. Mobility only got three, so we can fight defensively. And this is kind of a weird choice. Maybe you've decided three for athletics and 20 for mobility because, again, you are a dex-based guy on you on that. But it either had a green check mark on it, so either way it was a solid choice for you. Uh, notice persuasion got maxed for obvious reasons. You're only a kingdom, and again, intimidating uh, prowess slash uh, uh, dreadful carnage. You want to do your intimidation checks. And you need a high, high persuasion. So this 31 is looking nice, but remember, it's like technically 38 with intimidating prowess. Remember, plus 7 from your strength gets added to that as well. So it would be 38 plus a 1d20 roll. That's a pretty solid intimidation check for your dreadful carnage. And that's going to be AoE. As soon as you kill somebody, boom, AoE scare everybody. Uh, perception was a solid 20 for obvious reasons. I always like my perception being high, high, high on every tune. Uh, notice that stealth did not get to, to 20. Because mobility got 3, stealth only got 17. So mobility, I capped it to 3 as soon as possible, and then I started feeding into stealth, but only after catching everybody else up. So athletics was always trying to go up. Perception was always trying to go up. And then from there, I picked something. Knowledge, world. I don't even know why I picked it over Knowledge Arcana. Oh, you didn't have skill in Knowledge Arcana at all, but you did have a green check mark in Knowledge World. And your intelligence wasn't horrible, so I'm like, you know what, let's just go Knowledge. It could have been Lord Nature or Knowledge World, I think, was your choices. Uh, and I'm just like, look it, we got intelligence, let's go with this one. Uh, so with a solid 20 in there, and as you can see, we finished with a nice Knowledge World check. So you are a knowledgeable person. You do really well. You have really good armor. Not the best I've ever seen, but 54s are solid. And this is before buffs. Man, people can buff you with other shit. We have people slap on displacement or blur on your character and just have all kinds of fun with this tune. Uh, now, on that, um, we're taking to this little area. And of course, this is level one trash. Uh, but I wanted to show you some abilities uh, that we have down here in our tray. Uh, so, first, notice that we have power attack always on. Shield bash has to be on for you to use your shield. Uh, but that's there's no penalty to it, so just leave it on. And honestly, it doesn't even need to be in your goddamn tray. But I leave it here in case something happens to shut it off. I don't know that that's a thing, but you'd be surprised how often things shut themselves off. And I'm like, not getting all my attacks. And then we have um, blinding critical. There's no reason not to have it on. Again, there's no penalty here. The reason that it's a toggle is because we can't, but you could have on a different rogue build to have different types of criticals. So there's blinding critical. Well, in fact, you could have even picked it up on this build with different feet. There's blinding critical, tiring critical, exhausting critical, blah 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 But to get them, unlike this one, which you didn't have to meet the requirements, to get the other ones, you needed like critical focus, uh, weapon focus, and improved critical for that weapon, I think. And it's just like a bunch of weird fiddly shit, and it just wasn't worth the effort. But blinding critical for free, fuck yeah, we'll take it. 
And again, the reason for the toggle is because if you have blinding critical and say tiring critical, one of the other easier ones to get, you can't have both on at the same time without getting critical mastery, which we did not get either. So that's why the toggle. So you shut off one, turn on the other. In this case, there is no other, so you just leave it on. But I leave it in the tray to remind me that it's there. From there, notice that our robes, or cloak, excuse me, that's the prayer ability. At will, every round you can do this if you want to. Plus one luck bonus to attack rolls, damage rolls, saves, and skill checks. And the exact same penalty, the opposite, minus one for the uh, foes. And there is no save for that. Now, there may be like spell resistance, but who cares? The fact that you're at least buffing yourself is the reason you want that. And it lasts for a decent amount of time. I think it's like caster level nine or some shit. So you get it for like uh, 54 seconds or something. That's not bad. So like at every fight, you can go boop, brayer. And again, I would do that before running into every room. So I would like come up to a door with a team, of course. With that on the side. Let's go do it. Ready to die, suckers. Now, of course, you would probably be stealthing it up. Oh, I think he's going to make it. What do you think? <laughs> of course, he's going to die. Notice your Garona's amulet. That's your mirror image there. Oh, that my free attack. That was lame sauce. Way to start off with a miss while I'm trying to show someone how badass you are, you pansy. These are the characters, by the way. I went the uh, hand axe and uh, shield just because of the look of the character. I don't turn that on as a fan. And I'll explain that here in a little bit. Notice eight attacks. And again, do we have eight attacks? Five and three. So, yes, you do. You're not going to get them. Of course, you're going to die. First swing. Notice the minus two for the sneak attack, though. Okay. Uh, is that minus two to strength? Notice the hip. 66 a sneak attack. 1d8 plus 31 slashing. And again, prove to yourself uh, that that was accurate. You'd be surprised how often it says this is the number, and then the number is actually different when you hit the target. They, the, I will say this, though. The devs, they didn't originally. That this... Um, I don't know what you want to even call this, this pop-up menu that we have here, uh, was complete garbage uh, when the game was originally released way back when, like a year or two ago. Um, they've updated this considerably. For one, it would only show you your main attack, not all the multiple attacks. It wouldn't show you, like, the two weapon attacks weirdness. It wouldn't show you, like, the damage range. Uh, and this would not update when you would shut power attack off or turn power attack on until you fought somebody. You had to literally hit someone in the face and then this would up, update and say, oh, you really are getting 31, not 20 whatever. And you're like, what? <laughs> so, oh, okay. So it was very, very weird. So it's nice that the, the uh, only reason I point this out is because it's really nice that the devs went out of the way to kind of get those quality of life improvements to us. It really was appreciated, in my opinion, anyway. Um, so we got another guy in here somewhere. Ah, here he is. Okay, so let's uh, show you another cool ability he has. So this is something that shows up. And you will have this even if you do the two layers, uh, two levels of Paladin Dip. This is still something that you have access to. Slayer's Advance. 13th uh, level of Slayer can once per day increase his movement speed by 30. His movement does not provoke an attack of opportunity. 17th level, he can do this twice per day. So literally you can... Look at that shit. You can get it all the way across that fucking room. Just boom. And just to show you the character now. Slayer's Advance, another 30 feet. So literally, if you need it, it's not teleport per se, but if you need to get from point A to fucking point B and not be bothered by somebody twice a day, you have that ability. Okay. So fuck it, run right through the crowd. And that's powerful. That, that's a really nice, especially at the, like, the start of a fight. Like if you need to get the thick of things, kill somebody that's a cheap little bastard next to the main boss and all his minions. Kill the cheap motherfucker, do the, the intimidation cornering, or sorry, dreadful carnage uh, intimidation check. And hopefully scare multiple guys. Why? Because now that they're flat-footed to you because your shared defenses kick in. Remember, if they're shaken, frightened, or panicked, shared defenses mean you're hitting them as if they have no dex uh, modifier and dodge. That's what flat-footed is. But remember, it's another reason I love this build, if you can set that up. You know, this is hitting and it's hitting hard, and I'm not saying it's not. But remember this weapon? Menace? The glowing blade? Remember, this is the Brilliant Energy one. What does the Brilliant Energy one do? Remember, it cuts through them as if their armor is not there. So now between Shatter Defenses, Dreadful Carnage, your Intimidation check, and the ability to hit them fucking flat-footed, and a weapon that can take away their armor and their shield bonus, what do they got left? They basically got an armor of like 10. Okay, maybe not. Maybe it's a little better than that. But, but it's going to be fucking low 
So if you can literally start scaring people, even if it's just a little bit, but you're still having difficulty after you scare them, feel free to switch weapon categories to that little bastard there, Menace. Uh, I can't tell you where to get it, but I think it's a, a, a artisan gift, as a matter of fact. Uh, but get that thing in a decent uh, heavy shield to pair up with it, whatever it is that's on you. And again, switch to this guy, and you'll be cut again, unless they're undead and, and constructs, of course. There's always that caveat. You'll be cutting through them like it's fucking butter. It's going to be amazing, bro. And again, we have, and I just put the invisibility potions here just to remind you that you have the ability to just, you know, I'm invisible. And notice how zippy you are once you're under the effect of an invisibility spell while stealth. Remember, automatically put you into stealth. And plenty of time to walk around and just to, to show you what your stealth is looking at right now. That's about as good as I can get it for you. There's a, a, only three ranks away from it. And again, we didn't invest in any skills for like skill focus, like you know, stealth or anything weird. But again, with a, like a cloak, I think I can give you like another 10 to that. So you can get up to a solid 52, 62 maybe. And that's not bad. That is not bad at all. I, I think that's a solid, solid stealth check for someone that's still going to be on the team, still going to be relying on the team to do stuff. Now, what else do we have? Well, let's let's show you the couple other things that you're going to be missing out on. So first, the one thing you will get, just like me, you'll get the studied swift target. So watch this. We okay. will that's what it's going to do. That's a swift action. No big surprise here, but remember, you get free actions and swift actions and all this other shit besides. So, yeah, you weren't gonna hit me, son. Don't even try, loser. These guys are level one. This is trash. I'll show you a big fight here in a second. I'll spawn a bad guy for us to fight. Uh, but I just wanted to show you the abilities first. But that was my swift action, and I believe. Uh, da, da, da. Sneak that damage. I don't think I have to reapply it, but let's try it anyway just to prove it to ourselves. Oops, sorry, Yana. Okay, so I already got Swift. Oh, so let's do the free action. So that's this one here. This you would not be able to do right now uh, without burning up your full action because you don't have the free action because you did not get the improved quarry because you did two level dip into Paladin. This is why I'm not a fan of the Paladin so much. It's, it's solid. Don't kid yourself. You, the, the, your saves are fucking through the roof. But if you do this, see how it lights up the free action here? Free. You can do that. And now I can still swing eight goddamn times on a real tough target. Obviously, this guy's going to die quick. But I, I did both of those buff slash debuffs here and still get to attack. Full attack. Was still a kill. No, the other guy was out of range. But I want to show you what those attacks look like because, again, I got both of those buffs. I want you to see what happened. Okay, so we did the study the target, the swift one. Remember, your version, you only get plus four because you don't get the 20th level upgrade. That's the, the plus five. You get a plus four to your weapon attack and your damage. All, all your weapons, I believe, which we'll see here in a second. Uh, but uh, then the quarry, uh, you wouldn't be able to activate that and attack in the same round. I can do both uh, because it's a free action for me and not for you. Uh, and again, it's plus two, says here, but again, remember I have the improved quarry, which makes it plus four, doubles the strength. So it's a plus four insight bonus to attacks made against that quarry, and all, and love this part, all critical threats are automatically confirmed. Now, yes, you can get all this too. You get the plus two, not the plus four like me, but this part, the crits, is yours. You just have to use it as a standard action, which means you're burning up a turn, doing nothing but going, I ain't going to kick your ass in about six seconds, whereas I can just like, fucking die, bitch. And then swing, 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 swing eight goddamn times. And just gins you through their ass. So that's what I get that you don't. Now let's take a look at those swings, okay? So notice, study target plus five. You'd be at plus four. Quarry, plus four for me. You'd be at plus two, and you still couldn't attack this round, which I know I keep harping on that point, but fuck you, mine's cooler than yours. I don't care what you say about your pally dip. Okay, pally dip is going to make the saves way better. But I got teams that protect me. I'm not worried about the saves. But this is a solid screw you to the bad guys. And all in the same round with my attacks by the end of the build, of course. But still, that's a solid screw you to the bad guys, man. And it's just hard to pass that shit up. And that's not only attack bonus, which is awesome, but also I got a damage bump. 35, remember? Uh, Bloodhound. What's the Bloodhound actually at? 30. Where did the 5 come from? The plus 5. Remember, I got that from the... The study target, you would have gotten plus four. 
so it's not much different from yours so you got at least that but uh, again you could just have gone studied target swift action still and swung 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 you just wouldn't get the extra plus 40 your swing that the quarry is giving me yes you can activate that when you have the time or you really really need that extra plus two to your swing i suppose that would be the other way to do it with the paladin dip so so not to harp on the fact that paladin sucked it's fine uh, but it is a solid screw, and again, I do appreciate that plus five damage thanks to the study target, but you get that shit too. Um, and this really, really trivializes fights because, again, plus five and plus four for your swing, that's a plus nine to your swing, man, by the end of the game. That's a lot of bump for the one guy that you're, you're like, and no one, as far as I know, no one's immune to those things. That's just a, it, nope, you're my bitch, nope, you're still my bitch, and again, it's a nice one-two combo of just fuck you, fuck you some more. And again, it gets really, really good. Um... Where's our other one here? Sneak attack with the spike shield. I want to see if we got the buffs on those. Oh, no, because we killed the one guy. So, you see, that's the other trick here. Um, core and study target. Obviously, those are single target buffs. Uh, whoever I'm fighting. Just that one guy. So, as soon as he or she or it dies, I'm not getting the study target buff and the quarry buff any longer. So, these really are only for the tough dudes. I mean, sure, with a swift action and a, and a free action, I'll activate it on the very first guy I swing it every time anyway, because why not be buffed to make sure that dude dies? But I'd probably not be picking the weak goblin compared to the giant boss standing right next to him, because you're made for hitting targets, if that makes more sense, okay? Um, and again, uh, a sneak attack applicable. Why was it applicable? Because the fucker was flat-footed. Why was he flat-footed? Because we scared him by murdering his friend just seconds before. The massive 42 damage. And again, a nice intimidation check for you. Remember, you have to succeed. If you see succeed, chances are, not always, but chances are uh, they're scared of you. And that means flat foot. Why do I say chances are? Because you pass the check. Remember, some guys are immune to the shake and frightened and panic condition. So just because you pass the intimidation check doesn't mean that they're scared. Look for the aura on their body. It looks like a little gray stink cloud kicking off them. If you see the stink cloud, you know that they've been scared. And of course, if you check the combat logs and you see that they're flat-footed, and they shouldn't have been, then chances are you know why. Again, he has an 18 armor. Look at this. Part of that's difficulty in the size and the natural armor. But remember, if I use that menace sword, the one that, that cuts through him with the brilliant energy buff, the difficulty, the size, the base, and the would be there but the natural armor i believe is there too the armor goes off so he would instead of being 18 would have been a 16. and then that's not leaps and bounds better but think about what if he was in full goddamn plate mail instead of a plus two he could have been at like a plus eight this could have been six higher that could have been at 26 and again we're doing fine it's not the point if you really really need to hit that hard hitting target the one that's got the sword and board and full fucking plate armor and besides and he's not undead and he's not a construct switch to menace start the fight that way next combat round switch back or again make sure you're buffing up with your quarry and or your study target if you can do either of those or both of those and menace oh jesus shit's gonna fall at your feet and again as soon as you start intimidating people thanks to your awesome uh, dreadful carnage you get a really really nice intimidation check that goes off and again 3d8 uh, 38 sorry not 3d8 38 is not that bad um and there is gear in the game we didn't get it but there's gear in the game that could have made that better uh, you can look for that. Just look for anything that gives a bonus to persuasion, but make sure it doesn't say something like bonus to persuasion for bluff checks. That's not a bluff check. This is an intimidation check. So if you see something that says for to intimidate or intimidation or just generic persuasion buff, those are the ones you're looking for to make your intimidation check go through the fucking roof. And again, you're doing fine. I put it this way. On a, a normal to, to second highest or next difficulty past normal. Uh, I can't think of what it's called. Um, Maybe it's called difficult. Point is, this, the next one up from normal, this is uh, more than good enough to beat the game uh, with this intimidation check to do what you want to do. Uh, for hard difficulty, and of course the ultimate hard difficulty, whatever the hell it's called, this is still going to be okay. This build is not a solo build, though. Let's be real honest here. Yes, you, you're wearing robes, and yes, you're wearing brazier arm uh, class plus eight, and have really decent uh, saves if you go that two pa paladin down. I still don't think that you're going to want to try to beat this game solo with this character. You could probably do it, especially if you do the Paladin dip early, but it's going to be rough. Uh, and and on, the, on the hardest difficulty, well, let's just put it this way. I would never play this game on last Ezlanti mode, the one where you have one save and you're done. Like, you die, game's over. Fuck that shit. That's just suicidal stupidity. That is the dumbest mechanic I think I've ever seen in my life. 
let's just give you one save, not even the tutorial. You know, like you can save in there. You can save the minute you shut the game off, it auto saves so that you don't have to play a 200 hour game in a row. <laughs> but there is no scum saving. There is no go back. Oh, I died. Let's try over. No, you die. Game's over, son. It's it. And I would never try to solo this game on last Islanti mode. That's just a dumbass idea. Even on the hardest difficulty, which I have tried on some builds just to see how tough they were. Nope. Like, died in the tutorial. Fuck that shit, man. No one wants to have that kind of game. And even when you beat the tutorial and you're like, wow, we just managed to pull that through. Get to Oleg, you're level 2, feeling all badass, and then you die at Oleg. Motherfucker, I just wasted two hours of my life, and I can't fucking reset it. Because, again, last day's Lanti mode. Yay. That's just dumb. They should at least let you get to, like, end of chapter 1 and then turn that shit on. That should be, like, a challenge that I, I would be okay with trying that kind of a challenge. Because by then, you've beat the Stag Lord. You're, even with the team, full team, you're still level 5. It's still going to be rough. Don't kid yourself. But it's a lot better than being a level 1 or level 2 dying in the, the, you know, the tutorial or just past it. That's just dumb. Um, this is a solid tune. I think that you will like this character. Again, for the Paladin Dip, I can't tell you where to put it, bro. Because uh, the character just... It's too pretty right now for me to want to spoil it. But, I mean, honestly, if I were to be hard-pressed to decide, honestly, I really would do Paladin 1-2 and then run the rest of the way. Why? Because then you don't have to think about it. Everything just gets shifted over to the right, too. These all stay the same, more or less. Uh, this one just gets shifted. Instead of being at level 2, it'll be at level 4, because there'll be nothing at level 2. So it'll be over here, this one will be there, this one will be there, and everything just shifts over, and this one falls off. And that's still fine. Again, I, I, I just really think, though, that you're going to not be happy with the fact that Improved Quarry is gone. Something that's... A, 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 there is no... And I can't stress this enough. Between this and your uh, study targets, unlike, uh, say, something like um, your Smite Evil that you get for the Paladin Dip, even, you're only getting one of those, by the way. Um, unlike that, there's no limit to how many times you can use these in a goddamn combat. Every time you, you face a new opponent, it should be study target, and it should be improved quarry. Click, click. Attack, 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 attack. Because, again, swift action and... Uh, uh, sorry, swift action and uh, free action... That's nothing. We never use those. I mean, other than when you maybe like drink a potion or switch your weapons. And that rarely happens. So, click, click. Massive buff. Run over to the bastard. Chop him once. Start the uh, attacks. The one thing to me, and we'll say this as a last parting gift to you. The one thing to me that this build is missing, if I could say it's missing anything. And, I, and I'm not going to go with those saves because, again, you already know about your paladin dip. The one thing that's missing to me... Uh, is um, cornering and smash. And I know you say you didn't uh, care about it too much. I mean, if we could fit it in, great. And again, you could fit it in still. There's stuff in here that you could get rid of that would have made me okay with it. You know, like I could have gotten rid of the, uh, like the weapon focus. If you didn't need that one, if you didn't need it, you grab corning and smash without it. I think you might be able to. You could grab corning and smash, and I'd be okay with that. But. I think you need dazzling display. The reason I say I want corning and smash is just so we're clear and we understand what's going on. Remember, dreadful carnage is all you need, and you said so. And, and you're right. Shattered, uh, between shattered defenses and dreadful carnage, those are the two bread and butter moves. Power attack, unlocking one of them. So again, that's a solid choice. Um, you have to kill something to scare people now. Nothing wrong with that early levels, especially at level 10 here if, if you're going this type of build. Because at level 10 on up, you're going to be murdering shit all the time until you get to right around here where stuff is just really hard to fucking kill. So find a weak target at that point is my advice to you. But for Corning and Smash, remember, all you had to do to intimidate one person within Corning and Smash was hit them once with power attack on, which you're always leaving on anyway. So you go over there, pop one dude on the snoot at the start of the combat. He didn't have to die. You just had to hit him, which you'll probably do, even if you run across the room and smack him on the snoot. Bam, you've been hit. Intimidation just for that guy, not the AOE one, just for that one dude. Why is that important? Because next round, guess what, bitch? I'm going to be hitting him left and right thanks to Shattered Defenses. Choppy, 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 choppy. He dies. Then Dreadful Carnage kicks off, and then it just sets itself up. It just is a, a flowing, uh, seamless attack chain to me, anyway. So that's the one thing that feels like it's missing here. And it's not that bad. I mean, <laughs> not that bad. It's a great build. I mean, I, I must say, to my own horn, I feel pretty fucking happy with this. My, 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 you know, you can't see it, but I got my, my hands on my hips with pride right now. 
pretty badass. I think you'll like it. Again, last thing to talk about then before we leave is weapons. Oh, we, we need to finish this fight though. Hold on a second. Uh, where you at, you little fucker? Uh, uh, oh, oh, no, wrong guy, wrong guy. Not you. What up, buddy? See that little aura on him? That's a little stink cloud I was talking about. I want to show you uh, uh, other choices for armor and, and weapons. Because, again, maybe dueling sword wasn't your thing. That's another way to get another feedback, by the way. Man, just a solid fuck you. Oh, that's just a pretty, pretty attack. All right, what do we get here? We got uh, sneak attack on that one. Flat footage. Is <laughs> padded armor. 31 to your swing. Woo. Hot. Hot. Uh, and again, if you went mod crazy, like I said, there's there a mod uh, or a Call of the Wild where there's a feat that they call Furious, Fierce, Fierce, Furious Fighting something. I forget. It starts with an F. Um, and you need power attack to have it. Uh, and it, it takes away the, the, the first minus whatever this is, and the minus one, minus all the way up to, in this case, minus six, from the first swing. Not all the swings, just the first one. So again, if you're really trying to set it like a corn against smash build, a minus six to your swing on that first swing, that sucks. This could have been a 30 goddamn seven. You're likely to hit with that first swing. And again, with corn against smash build, all you have to do is hit him. Boom, you hit him once, and now he's scared, and now he's flat-footed. See what I'm saying? So, but that's what the different mod. Um, that's still a solid, solid screw, and I do love the minus strength, so again, I would not get rid of that that feat. I know that's a weird um, request, but I did like that one, and I did like the blinding critical, too. You didn't really get a chance to see it, uh, but uh, we really got a really good chance of, of critting targets with this build, in my opinion. Now, let's talk about uh, gear. I'm going to pull that thing together. Let's talk about gear. What we got for uh, possibilities? Um, first, let's talk weapon. Uh, you know, just to show you the choices, and we will show you all the uh, uh, dueling swords first, because that's the one I went with. So just type in dueling. It's a menace, and then your generics and your masterworks and your blood. Again, so the, the game has the typical, what I call the typical damage. You know, the, oh, it's shock plus one, the fire plus two, it's keen. There's probably even a speed one in here somewhere if I look for it. We've got Corrosive, Flaming, Frost, Keen, Shock, Radiant. That's a weird one, by the way. That's a very good one. Um, corrosive, again, with a plus two. Dueling, Flaming, uh, plus two. Frost, Shock. Okay, and then we get to the name one. So now we have Lord Protector, plus two. Notice this weird one. This is a, I think this is a gift. Uh, this is, I think this is the one that uh, if you beat... Chapter one, the the stag lord, and to turn it in. That's the key part. You beat him, you you clean out the, all the shit from the area, take it back to Oleg, sell it, talk to Oleg, and then go to uh, uh, the lady Jamandi, whatever the hell her name is. Um, you go talk to her. If you can do all that in under thirty days, you give they give you ninety days to kill this son of a bitch. If you do it under thirty, she gives you a reward. She gives you a dueling sword. I think this is it. And this is the weird one because it's a minus five penalty to attacks against friendly targets. You're like, what the fuck kind of crap bonus is that? Well, if you've been confused and you're trying to kill your own team, you see how this might be helpful. But this is not something that you want anyway. You're not supposed to be confused, so that's just a bad idea. But it's it's a free magic sword. I think that's where that one comes from. Royal Gift plus your keen dueling sword on the other hand. If it's this one, ooh, baby, I doubt it. But this is a nice one because that's, again, that the remember, dueling swords crit on a 1920 normally. So this is the 17, 18, 19, 20 for free because it's the keen version. And it's plus three. It's a solid upgrade. Remember, it's no, none of these are agile so far. Swordsman's Passion. Now, this one's agile. Plus two agile. Remember, you're a dex-based character with two weapons in your hand. You do not get that dex modifier for damage. You're relying on strength, and your strength sucks. So having any agile weapon in your main hand, suddenly that dex comes back into play. So that's why your dex always, always, always is going up, up, up. Okay. But that's a solid, solid upgrade for you, having Swordsman's Passion, Dueling Sword plus 5, of course, Arcane Enforcer, this is the one you do have, this one does the 1d6 of extra damage, plus 3 Dueling Sword, again, it's not uh, Agile, though, Bloodhound, though, this is the Speed, Agile, plus 5, massive crit range, and stacking extra damage, so if you, you fight a bad guy, which we're about to summon here in a moment, we'll fight, like, some big-ass trolls or something, uh, and just go to town, they'll die very, very quickly, thanks to your Bloodhound, in my opinion. Uh, but that's that's your uh, dueling swords. 
then, of course, uh, Rapier was the other choice, in my opinion. Again, you didn't need a feat to unlock these. Look at the laundry list you have here. Flaming Rapier, Putrid Blade, nice Agile, plus three. The downside that I found with Rapiers was all the Agile ones seem to be the plus threes. Not that they didn't have cool shit going for them. I mean, Acid Resistance 20 does corrosive damage, so acid damage on a strike, which is fucking awesome. And you got a free spell once a day. Sweet. Vein Finder, this is the bleed one. Three Agile Rapier again. Uh, remember, these all have that nice crit range of 18, 19, and 20. So that if you get the improved critical feat, then again, you're at the maximum crit range, 15 to 20. So that's why, again, Rapiers was the solid choice. And a bleed attack. This one, um, I don't think this one stacks. Unlike the shield, the cool Ravina's old shield, that one has a bleed component to it. And that one specifically in its tool tip does say it stacks, which means every time you hit them with that shield, bash, 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 they hit and they're bleeding and the bleed stacks, which means can really add up to the bad guys, assuming they don't heal themselves, of course. This one even gives you the ability to heal yourself or somebody, cure amount of wounds once a day. Not amazing, but maybe if you know you know someone bled you, you could use this to go, oop, heal. So again, cool. But you also have lay in hands thanks to your paladin dip. Again, lots of good stuff. The elemental edge, I don't think it exists in the game. Now, I could be wrong on this, but I think this is one that was uh, the modder added his own little flair. So this is the plus one rapier that's got cold, fire, acid, and electric damage. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it does exist in the game, but it seems kind of weird. Anything that looks like a very odd weapon, assume that the modder just added it and it doesn't exist in the game. Um, notice that we have, uh, uh, again, fire, frost, keen. Here's a bunch of agile. Here's an agile flaming frost, rapier plus four. This has got to be something that the modder added. An agile flaming frost shot corrosive rapier plus four. Come on, dude. That that can't exist in the game. That has to be something the modder added. And as such, you can gift it to himself. You click this and you gift it to yourself, but that's cheating. Um, and you don't use mods. Um, agile Rapier, though, these ones definitely are going to be in the game. And again, nothing fancy here. Just Agile Rapier plus one. But remember, your dex, if it's high, that's plus damage, baby. Um, where's my other name? So, oh, Keen Radiant Rapier. Remember that Radiant's not uh, um, Brilliant Energy. I, don't confuse those two. I do it all the time. Keen, though again, best crit range. Radiant just means it's a different damage type. I want to say it's like divine or some shit. Um, positive energy, maybe. But again, it's a different damage type. So it's very similar to like your shock, your frost, your, your acid, whatever. Um, cold iron, remember it works beautifully for penetrating stuff. I didn't see adamantine in here once, by the way. We have, of course, stratagem, deadly grace, black salt, satisfaction, and revelry. And again, lots of named weapons. Those are usually my favorite choices. Stratagem is just a generic agile rapier plus two. That's it. It's not, I mean, it's, it's nice. Don't kid yourself, but it's not amazing. Deadly grace, uh, Plus one keen agile rapier again. It's only plus one though, but again is a terrible saving throw associated with it But if they fail it on a nat one remember they fail it they take extra acid damage. I guess yay I don't care uh, black salt. This one is terrible. It sounds amazing Plus five vicious rapier deals two damage to a random ability on a hit You can't reduce those abilities to uh, lower than seven but basically you're fucking over their strength their dex their con their intelligence their wisdom their charisma just randomly, just pokey, 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 you know, make him drooling idiots and also weak as a kitten. But notice this vicious part. This is the reason you don't want this one. This is the one that it has a, a, uh, a feature. The vicious uh, moniker means that every time you hit the bad guy, he takes another 2d6 of damage. Well, that sounds awesome. What's the problem? Well, the problem is, is it also does 1d6 back to you. That's why it's vicious. And if you look at the weapon, it looks like a, a rapier with a bunch of little rapiers sticking off it, like a little jagged uh, spike sticking off the blade. You're just like, what the fuck is that? That's this black salt. It's a weird ass weapon. And again, if you had uh, something that could heal you routinely, so again, that 1d6 of damage every time you hit somebody, that shit stacks up. Uh, so if you have someone that can routinely heal you, this is an awesome weapon, but it's still one of those where it just seems like a bad idea. Uh, satisfaction, on the other hand, each time the enemy hits you, it's plus five anarchic mithril rapier. The mithril means something. I'll explain in a minute. You get more damage to the end of the battle, and it stacks. But again, it requires you get poked in the snoot. Why the fuck would I want to get hit, motherfucker, just so I can get extra damage? Fuck that shit. This is the exact opposite of the weapon you have, where every time I hit you, I get a plus two to my damage. That's the one I want, not this piece of shit. Uh, plus, but this does help finish fights. Don't kid yourself. The plus five anarchic mithril rapier. Okay, the plus five, you know what that is. The anarchic, I want to say that's like the opposite of holy or, or 
or chaotic, so axiomatic. Yeah, so this would be, it, it's like 2d6 of damage against chaotic targets or some shit like that. The mithril part, though, uh, it means it's made of partially silver, which means that if they have a, a silver as their dr, say they have, you're fighting like a werewolf, where it's dr10 slash silver, so he's uh, taking 10 less damage from bash, uh, from bludgeoning, from slashing, from piercing weapons, unless it comes from a silver weapon. That's what the slash silver means. This is considered a silver weapon. That's all that means. And it, it's lighter, but it's still a light weapon, or not a light weapon, sorry. It's still a rapier. It doesn't move it to the light category, just to be real clear. Um, and then, of course, uh, what's our last one? Revelry. Plus five. Holy Anarchic. Now, that's a lot of shit all in one. Rapier grants his will. Now, this is the reason I like the rapiers. Having this in your little fingies, you have freedom of movement on your character all the time. You're never paralyzed. And you have immunity to fear. Fucking awesome. Remember, I love my immunities. And this is basically immunity on crack. This is just amazing. With all the other shit, this could have been your weapon. And again, if you did this, this would give you back your um, feet for exotic weapon a pick. Remember, we needed to pick dueling swords. So on you, but this could have been the goal. And again, I don't know where this exists in the game. This could be like the very last fight for all I fucking know. If it's reasonably at the end of the game, you know, you got like you know, several hours still to play, like the last chapter or so even, this could be okay. I would not mind this. But again, I love uh, weapons or shields or armor that give me freedom of movement for free. This is always a staple for me. But that's a solid choice. Now then, that was an easy pick. Uh, rapiers were. Um, you can... Uh, search for Agile just to show this to you uh, just because there's a very weird uh, Agile weapon in the game I wanted to show that to you Thundercrack is a scimitar it used to be in the vanilla version of the game then they modded it or not modded the um, devs patched it out it used to be that scimitars were weapon finessable they are no longer with mods you can't against they gave you a feat that uh, called uh, uh, Dervish Dance I think is what it's called and it allows you it, it, with mods to take weapon finesse, have a scimitar in your hand, and then you will use your dexterity modifier for not only your swing, but also for your damage. So it's like fencing grace and weapon finesse all in one, kind of. But you still need weapon finesse. But you get dervish dance, uh, and now you get really good uh, accurate hits with a scimitar with a dex-based build and really good damage. You don't have that without mods. Uh, and that's why you'll see stuff like this, so it's like a throwback. They forgot to take it out. So there's an agile shock scimitar, and it does work. You will swing with your strength. You'll do damage with your dex. It's fucking weird. But if that's your thing, that was a choice. And this is, again, scimitars were the other highest crit range, so the 18, 19, 20s. But they're usually made for the... Um the fuck is going on? Oh, I heard noises of a sword swing. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Um... But yeah, that's that's. Uh, I just want to show you that, that the scimitars are a possibility, or agile weapons are a possibility that are not normally agile. Um, this would still be a solid choice though for a strength-based build, because the agile would be ignored. Remember, it only works if your dexterity modifier is better than your strength. Remember, so scimitars were a solid choice for a strength-based build. Uh, but uh, that wasn't the only choice. Remember, we had uh, rapiers, we had uh, dueling swords, we also had S stock was another possible choice. There wasn't a lot of them in the game, and I did an S-Stock Saint back in the day, brother. And I was pissed off because I was told on the forums, this is before, and it's not the forums' fault, um, this is before anyone really got into the game heavy and knew what all the different stuff uh, was available. Remember, it's it's coded in there, so it's it's the thing that they really dropped the ball on this game, if, if I could bitch for a second, is they did not give you the ability to make a weapon. They really should have uh, picked, like, I don't know, like five different weapons that were like awesome for their abilities. You know, like you know, a disruption weapon, a holy weapon, uh, the one that you have, like the Bloodhound, where it's like speed and agile all in one. But they should have made it where you could have had it crafted to match the weapon focus that you picked for your character. You know, like you, you go to your blacksmith and say, hey, I'm the fucking ruler. I want this, not just whatever you fucking bring me. You know, I want an S stock or I want a short sword or I want a great axe or whatever that's where they really screwed up in this game in my opinion there is no crafting system and where you, it doesn't even have to be an amazing crafting system but it literally is i want this sword uh blinding light but i don't want it as an s stock i want it as a dueling sword i want it as a bastard sword i want it as a whatever make it 
we'll go. You know, honestly, that's how I would have done it too. I, I would have said, find the weapon in the game, like blinding light. Let's say you stumbled it in the dungeons or whatever. You find it. You say, I can't use this shit. Put it in your pack. Take it all the way back to your weapons. And say, hey, can you downgrade this to a great axe or a short sword or whatever? You know, keeping all the components the same. Yeah, I can do that. It'll cost you. Okay, here's your, here's your money. Make it for me. You come back in a month or a week or whatever, and bam, you have the blinding light of great axeness or whatever. That's how I would have done it. Okay, ran it over. Anyway, uh, S dots were another solid choice because in the forums, it's the highest crit range weapon again. So 18, 19, 20. And it has the best damage category because it was a 2d4 compared to, say, like a rapier, which is a 1d6. So it was doing technically more damage. So uh, if, if you ever want to calculate your average weapon damage, you'll notice I always go by the plus whatever that's at the end. So it's 1d6, 1d8, 2d4, plus 30. It's always the plus 30 that I give a shit about because everything else is kind of like, who gives a fuck? But you do. So 1d6 for like a rapier, let's just say. If you ever want to know how that math works out, just take the, the die roll, roll the lowest, a little one, the highest is a six. There's equal chance of all of those, right? And then everything in between. So add the one and the six together. That's a seven. Divide by two, because it's in half, because it's an average. 3.5 is your average damage with a rapier, just a generic rapier. Take your generic S stock. That's 2d4. The lowest you could roll is two ones, a, a, a one and a one. So two. The highest you could roll is a, a two fours, which is an eight. Okay, so a four and a four, so an eight. So two and eight added together is ten. The average damage is five. So you see how my S-stock technically is better than a rapier, which is, again, an average damage of 3.5. But it's only a difference of 1.5. Ooh, la-dee-da. Maybe I'll kill one guy faster than you in the entire fucking game. Well, maybe not this one, but maybe a handful. It's not that impressive. But people were swearing by it on the forums. But again, they were going by a pen and paper version of the game. So I made an S-Stock Saint, and then I found out there weren't very many S-Stocks in the game. And I'm like, well, you just shot me in the foot. And it's a shame, because she was a Sword Saint. That's why I called her S-Stock Saint, because it wasn't a sword. It was an S-Stock. So S-Stock Saint was fun, but I couldn't find anything better than I think I had, like, an Agile S-Stock plus one, finally. Because she was a dex-based build, you know, dex and intelligence. And I'm like, where the fuck are all the Agile weapons? And I finally found one, and I'm like, fucking thank you. And then it was just a plus one. I'm like, shit. I'm like, well, at least it's better damage. And I took it, and I ran with it for a good long while, but I did not beat the game with her because I just got fed up with not being able to find any. But the ones that you can find, Keen, Speed, S-Stock, plus four. Now, the Keen, you don't care about. I mean, it's nice, but again, you're going to get improved critical. But it's Speed, that, that plus four. That's not the plus five, but it's still a solid choice here. Uh, it's not Agile. That's the big downer. Uh, but notice this part. You can cast once a day a spell. So, yeah, something. It's not quite as good as your dueling sword, but this was a solid choice, like a runner-up, if you will. Uh, and then if you look through the rest of the S-Stocks in here, the Agile plus one is about the only thing in here that worth a damn. Uh, Agile plus three, there you go. And then you get the other named ones here. So we got Forsaken Edge, plus two Unholy S-Stock. Remember, it does damage against good. That's not you. Yeah, what's the chances you're fighting good guys? Fuck that shit. Hair Splitter. This is the one that I found. It is the plus one. I'm like, a named weapon, finally. And it's a plus one Agile S-Doc. I'm like, fuck you, game. <laughs> it just pissed me right off. Uh, Blinding Light was the one I was shooting for because people told me about it. And I have no idea where this is even. I think it's like at the end of the fucking game. It's like, like the worst possible thing they could do to you, too. Like the best weapon they give you. And they're like, here it is. The game's almost over. Have fun! <laughs> but it's a plus five S stock, nothing fancy, except the crit modifier is now times three instead of times two. And that was cool. Uh, and then, of course, this uh, whenever it lands a critical hit, it has a chance to blind the target just for free, but I don't know what the DC check is because it doesn't tell you. So you'd have to crit and find out what their, their DC check was, which I didn't give enough of a shit to actually care. And you already have blinding criticals, remember, for free. So maybe this would stack, or not stack, in, in the... Uh, there's a chance both, you know, two different ways to blind them. Yeah, so not stacking, whereas a back-to-back a -back check. Like, oh, you know, they failed this one, or they passed this one, but then they failed the other one, or vice versa. Okay, so that, that could have been cool, but that was it. So there's not really a whole lot of reasons to want those. I, I, I'll just to show you to the other choice. I remember I, I told you I had the, the four characters here. The other choice I was toying with was hand axes. And I want to show you why. Uh, so first... There's a decent smattering of them. They're, they're all light weapons. That's the big downer. But there's an Adamantine Construct Bane Hand Axe plus 5. And you get DR5 against physical attacks except for bludgeoning just for having your little thingies. That was kind of cool. But wait. 
the Caustic Shocking Burst Hand Axe, plus two. This one's a little mean son of a bitch. Uh, not only is it Shocking Burst, for those of you that don't know what that means, Shocking is a 1d6 of electric damage, but it does even more. It does 1d6 normal, but then on a crit, which is rare because Hand Axe is only crit like on a 20, uh, the, the damage bursts and does even more. It does like 1d6 jumps up to like 2d10 or something like that, or 1d10, something like that. So it's slightly more damage when you crit. But the caustic, that was the interesting part. This was not corrosive. Notice that. It says caustic. Caustic is actually 2d6 of acid damage. And that's not on a crit. That's on a normal hit. So that's a handy little hand axe right there. Again, not agile. There is agile ones. So agile hand axe plus four. And then there's the agile brilliant energy hand axe plus one. This one was the other reason I wanted this one. Because, again, brilliant energy. Remember, that's the one that cuts through their armor. It's only a plus one though, but it was agile. So I'm like, well, that's a lot of bang for your buck. And I could kind of live with a plus one with the brilliant energy buff on there. Because while that sucks, that is taking away so much armor that even if, if this was a plus five, it still wouldn't probably matter that much. Yeah, I'm missing out on a little extra damage, but the swing, it's probably still going to hit. And then there was uh, another one that's not under hand axe like this. If you actually use this mod, you have to go space search beacon because they're a hand space axe. They typed it in wrong. So plus two frost hand axe. So again, does 1d6 of frost damage probably on a hit. Uh, notice this. Every time it lands a hit, the enemy has to pass a reflex saving throw, lame DC, or get blinded from one to three rounds. And I'm like, oh, okay. And again, 1d, uh, DC 13, this is garbage. But again, remember on a nat failure, and on a, a crit failure one, they always fail. So they could get blinded. It's just... And the, and the fact that it was on a hit, not a crit, that was the selling point here. Could have been cool, but now here was the downside with those weapons and weapons like them. Okay, just to, to, to beat a dead horse here. Um, the reason I didn't like, that's these two characters here. The reason I did not like them uh, is if you go to their weapons, because these guys are finished, I think, yeah. If you go to their weapons and like, just gift them something, notice their, their damage output is shit. And you, you're like, well, we got power attack on it, so minus six. You're only getting 12? How come they're not even getting, like, the strength bonus plus one, or the seven from here? Or the weapon bonus, for fuck's sake. It's a plus five. Where is it? A... Okay, so here's the thing that they don't tell you, I don't think, in power attack. Maybe, or maybe I'm just not seeing it in the tooltip. Um, the minus six plus 12, which is a staple for power attack, same as piranha strike. For a light weapon, see that category up here, where it says in the upper right corner, stone cutter hand axe, light Light weapons only get half of that power attack buff. So instead of minus 6 plus 12, it's minus 6 plus 6. So of this 12, 6 of it's coming from power attack. 5 is coming from the weapon. You see how it's a plus 5 weapon? And then 1 is coming from strength. You see all that shit? So 6 plus 5 plus 1, 12. That's garbage. And once I realized I was doing that, I'm sitting there like, I'm so proud of myself. This character is awesome. Even did my little 2 pally dip. Notice, by the way, the, the 42 reflex and will saves. And again, that's before we've buffed your character up proper. Remember, this can go much, much higher. I'd say you can probably get these uh, at least another... Uh, give you a good solid number here. Let's say 6, 6, and 6. And then another... Let's just say 10 higher minimum for each of these things. So this could be a 27 plus. This could be at least a 30. This could be a 20. So again, if you want to see what your paladin dip is going to feel like, this would be what you would feel like. Okay? Just... That damage is shit. At least that was just the worst idea ever. And I, I was all proud of myself because I found a cool picture with someone with a sword and she had a cool little fucking hand axe. I'm like, yeah! And then it turned out to be garbage. And I'm like, no! So, let's g uh, gift you one last thing before we go here. Let's gift you a big-ass fight. Uh, how don't we do this? Sorry, I'm just trying to remember my mods here. Uh, is this one? No, I think so. Been a while, sorry. Resurrected, cost of money, party options, enemy statistics. What the hell? Oh, spawn units, there we go. Jeez, I'm blind. Uh, okay, so here, by the way, here, here's how you use this part. Okay, so unit name, unit type, you can search by all these things. Um, but what you can type in here says, even give you some info down here. You can literally search for like a, a CR range of bad guys. So you can do, say, CR. Uh, 20. And search. These are all the level 20 bad guys. They're probably shit you'll fight at the end of the game. Now, I'm not going to spawn one of these because my team is going to get their ass handed to them. Most of them don't have gear. 
and if they kill the main character, the fight's over. So I'm going to do something a little less strenuous. Let's just do 15. 15 is a solid choice. Uh, so we got Zorek, whatever the fuck that is. Abandon, keep sister. No, no. Do Lomer Cats. Ghost of Guard Giant. Slug Layer Boss. Oh, no, see, that sounds all right. Uh, so on those, uh, you also want to, wait, where is it at? At the bottom. No. How do I do this again? Sorry. Export units. Try this copy information to clipboard. That's probably what I'm looking for right here. Uh, so let's do this. I feel like I'm missing the opportunity to make them hostile. The only reason I do this is uh, I'm being careful here, man, is because if you if you spawn them and they're not hostile, they just stand there. You don't get any real fight out of it. Um, I could have sworn there was a hostile option though. Okay, maybe it's after you summon them. Hold on. So, Giant Slug Lair Boss 15. Go like that. Ah, there it is. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, okay. You spawn right there. Yeah. there it is. Ain't it lovely? That's how you do it. Okay, sorry. Took me a minute. So, again, I want to backpedal everyone away. So, let's hope they don't die instantly. Purest build. You too. Okay. Yeah, my face is melted off. There we go. Okay, so here's your character. And I'm going to have them delay. Let him get rid of other idiot out the way. I don't want to have flanking or anything. Uh, 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 she died. Uh, she didn't have any gear on. Uh, that's why I wanted to get her away, though, so that, that I'm not getting flanking or anything. You can just see what the character is done, uh, ready to do. All right, so now, first things first. Now, I, I could do this, but that would literally take my turn. You should, but you, you want to do it before battle. Uh, I'm not going to do the Master Slayer either, because, again, if you're doing the Paladin Dip, you don't have access to that. We've already used our Slayer Advance, but we have infinite uses of these things, right? So remember, we have Study Target Swift. Notice the Swift icon appears up here to let you know you're using it. Oh. And then, of course, because I have Quarry Free Action, I can do this one. If you do this, now that would be your turn. Poof. Now, I can attack. <laughs> Now, I want you to see that because it looks like he was immune to a lot of your sneak attack shit, right? Because we were doing intimidation checks? No, we did not because he didn't die till the very end. Duh. I keep forgetting I don't have corn and smash. But you did do an intimidation check probably at the very goddamn end when he died. He uses dazzling display. But for our damage, how did we do? We got a solid 40 to our swing, 20 base, dex of 13, study target and quarry, minus two for two weapon fighting, plus one because I got weapon focus, you may not have that. Power attack is at a full minus six, solid damage for you. You're not getting anything better than a plus 12, but still it's plus 12. This is why, again, power attack was necessary, but so was a weapon that was weapon finessable, but not light. That was your key. So if, again, if you're trying to switch from a dueling sword, it's why rapier was in the other category was still a solid choice. It's not a light weapon. It's a weapon finessable weapon, but not a light weapon. And it would still work then with power attack with the full plus 12 damage, unlike the hand axes. Uh, it's also why, by the way, in case you're wondering, I didn't do like punching daggers or star knives or daggers or even a short sword as your main weapon because they're all considered light weapons. There's some really good ones, especially daggers in the game, but couldn't do it. Uh, Bloodhound, it's a plus five weapon. So you got, after all the things said and done, for the very first swing, a solid 40. 
And again, he had a good armor class. As you can see, he had a solid 32. And again, you did not buff up. You didn't have anyone cast, um, uh, 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 you know, like, uh, heroism or greater heroism, bless even prayer, which I could have done. Remember, I have that part of my robes or my, my cloak. I got that for free. It's a plus one to your swing band. It's not amazing, but it's another plus one. You would have been at a 41 or higher. So again, new solid, solid swing. And then the next question is damage, because remember, you weren't getting any sneak attack, as you saw. So how did we set that up? We got ourselves a solid 1d8 plus 35. I and mean, normally it's 30. Five more is coming from our um, study target. Uh, and then, of course, as we giant suck deals 10 damage for us. So this was the one where, because we were using... Um, melee weapons that didn't have reach he was doing acid to us every time we smacked him that's why you saw da damage coming back our way uh then we hit him again the second swing this is with the shield now it's at a solid 40 plus 27 now not dex because it's a heavy shield remember so plus seven here uh matter of fact i think even on a light shield it'd still be plus seven and the reason i say that is uh because a light shield there is no agile uh, and I don't think they're any, any of their weapon finessable. So this should be a plus seven every time. Um, plus five though from study target, plus four from quarry. So that did work. Minus two, because again, we're two weapon fighting, but thanks to shield mastery, we take away that two from here. The other five came from the shield and then another five from the shield itself because it's a weapon shield. And then the, of course, the minus from the power attack. Finished with a solid friggin' plus 42 to swing on that one too. And I'm proud of that shit. And that was, um, that's the Bloodhound. Where is it at? Heavy Shield hit. 1d6 plus 34. That's not bad. Should be 29. But that's uh, 5 more again from our uh, ability that um, study target. And that's a solid hit. That is a solid, solid screw you hit, man, as far as I'm concerned. Now, you'll notice uh, you do not have uh, anything special about your hits. I mean, besides power. Lots of hits, lots of damage. You don't have acid, fire, cold, blah, blah, blah. But last thing to tell you before we leave uh, if we were to talk about items and equipment gloves okay just go with a uh, first death dealer gloves these are the one I told you about they give you another sneak attack die again for that target we weren't doing any sneak attack damage and it wasn't because we couldn't I don't think I don't think he was immune to it we didn't have flanking set up remember I had the other characters run away I wanted you to see that you could do damage even without your sneak attack um, and again, we could have set up Sneak Attack by chugging like an invisibility potion and then attacking them the next round. But this could have given you more Sneak Attack damage. Uh, but if, if you're going to do something like that, I would honestly, you'd rather do the Alkali Gloves. Uh, any melee weapon attack, unarmed strike, or natural weapon attack you have, which I would assume that would include your shield, 1d6 of acid damage per hit. Remember how many hits you have? You got uh, a speed weapon, so you're getting five attacks around with that speed weapon, three more attacks from your shield. That's eight attacks in a combat round, even if they only half of them hit. You just did 4d6 of extra acid damage. Now, that's something that they may be immune to or resistant to. But if they weren't, that's more reliable to me than the 1d6 of sneak attack extra from uh, Death Dealer. See that? And again, this is only going to do more precision damage, which is, again, physical damage. So if they have resistance to physical damage, that's going to get eat up by that as well. But were they resistant to acid? I don't know but I better believe that this would be probably the gloves I'd put on just to eke out some more damage since your your damage types with the dueling swords are quite generic, okay? Now, I know this video's gone long enough, but I, I wanted to cover the entirety of it as well as the paladin dip enough that you knew what you're talking about. I have it all written down here for the generic build, the one I have here, the purest build, I should say, and I'll type that in below, and you'll see that in the... Uh, 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 description underneath where everyone puts their comment section i'll have it pinned okay so that you can refer back to it and again many things can be shuffled around shuffle it around as you need but remember for the if you're not going paladin if you're going with the fierce build the level two the level six and the level ten those were the three you have to have to have to remember those are the ones you have to pick menacing and you trick your um, power attack your shattered defenses your dreadful carnage in that order those ones have to be picked at that spot that's how you do this with this build without needing strength uh, higher than the 12 that you started with. And again, you could have done it with a belt of strength plus two. I mean, it's been uh, available. Wouldn't have been that big of a deal. But the fact that I could do it without it made me so proud. 
with that though my name is brother Neil. please like subscribe comment down below tell me what you think of this build test it out yourself tell me how it works and i'll see you guys soon bye now